And we are live, ladies and gentlemen. Well, just gentlemen, but the rest of the internet, hello. Hello. Oh, hey. we are live. We, we are very live. TJ, it looks like you got a bunch of projects behind you. What is all that? Terrain. Huh? Terrain stuff. Oh. So, I yeah, I'm just terrain stuff, and then it's... It's what I was going to be working on until I decided to change up my LVO list, but you know that's that's here nor there. I almost thought that you started working on that two-year-old model that we had chatted about today. No, it's still in a box. Totally needs to be worked on. Yeah. <laughs> Can I guess what, what model that is? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go and guess. Is it a bigger version of what you just finished painted? Yes. Yes, it is. <laughs> it starts with a oh, wolf with a hound. It's kind of like the full size version of it. Oh, okay. It's a war okay. hound. Yeah. It's an interesting hound that he still hasn't painted yet. Oh, it's getting there. Or built. It's not even built. No. <laughs> or <clears throat> it's not even cleaned. It's not washed. Yeah. Yeah, it's not washed. It's not anything. It's it's actually terrifying. It's still in the bag. Yeah. For two uh, follow, follow the directions. It's like two pages of directions. I hope that helps. Yeah. I'll tell you what. When, when you start putting together, there's a couple things, with, mainly with the feet. We'll, when you get there for like all the pistons and stuff, we'll talk because it's a pain in the butt. You, you have to do all puns aside, uh, do some dry fitting before okay. you glue everything in. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to, I really need to get on it. It's just, I haven't really thought about what I'm going to do with the base yet. So I, I don't, yeah, yeah. I can figure out what I want to do with that. I'm scared. Uh, I really need to get on it. It's just, I haven't really thought about what I'm going to do with the base yet. Wait, so I, I don't, who, yeah, who I don't didn't move this video? That's you. That's really Jonathan. Is that me? That's nope. not me. I'm watching it on the screen at you. Oh. Uh. Jonathan, you're killing me, Smalls. Man, I always it automat it auto mutes. I, I'm not using my normal computer. I'm using this crappy old Dell. So, I uh, I decided I'm gonna get a new laptop because I'm not gonna deal with the the one I have that's broken. And but I'm gonna have to like sell things to afford a new laptop. So, <sighs> I'll take a kidney. <sighs> Uh, bucks. I'm not selling that much. We'll give you twenty bucks. Yo, you'll just give me twenty bucks? I'll, yeah. I mean, yeah. I, for other favors. Oh, okay. Like high fives and stuff. I like okay. that. Sure, I'll give you a high five after you're done. <laughs> oh, I don't know if that's worth twenty bucks. I mean, I thought you said you charged uh, what is it, dollar an inch? Oh, it's ten dollars an inch. Ten dollars an inch. Okay, twenty bucks will work. <laughs> I, I knew that's where that was going. <laughs> Look at Ski. Ski's like, all right, I don't want to talk about this anymore. <laughs> so I'm just uh, all my uh, stuff for today's discussion, other than what you guys are discussing <laughs> and getting on the ball. <laughs> all right, let's. What do we what do we talk what are we talking about tonight? Uh, well, in the title, I put fungus among us. Pokemon Go, fungal pop or squat, <laughs> and I said let's talk about them dirty grots, and the new teaser picture from GW Funko Pop Marine or squats, and who else is excited about the Vigilus campaign? Wait, hello. We're not talking about Pokemon Go tonight. I, I was totally yeah. not. Wait, 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 wait. TJ, hold that back up real quick. Why? Okay, earlier he was actually walking in place. Oh, there he goes. He was walking in place again. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he's he's got an Apple device. That's why. I've got an iPhone, so my GPS is messed up. So I constantly walk. It's it's a new. <laughs> At least he's getting his exercise. Yep. Well, he's getting if his we exercise have time, if we have time tonight, I've got. A heap of rumors concerning uh, gene stealer cults that some yeah. people might be interested in. Yeah, you're telling us that right before we went live. 
Yep. And yeah. stuff. So I guess let's. I guess we'll start off with all the. Uh, are we going to start off with uh, like fungus among us? Well, yeah. Can you take I, it away. I, I, well, I was thinking maybe go with the the, the new price changing of uh, uh, starting boxes first. Let's start with the bad, but it's an actually good in disguise. Okay. Okay. So you tell. Okay. So I know everybody's up in the uproar because of GW raising prices of get started boxes and paints. It's a yearly thing with paints. It's not going to break the bank. They have really good paints. Some people will disagree and that's fine. I, I think their paints are really well done there. I use all paints. And so I, it's not that bad of a deal, but what really got me is to get starting boxes. Now, I just want to go over this real quick. I know for a fact there's two armies in the Get Started Boxes on the Age of Sigmar side, which is the uh, Iron Jot Orcs and the Corn. Uh, I think it's a Corn. Um, you are getting the most value out of those those two primary boxes that you're saving so much money. So if they raise the price from like let's say eighty five dollars to ninety five dollars, a ten dollar increment on the Iron Jot box, people have to put in perspective is the piggies in that box is almost, I think it's what 80 bucks or $82 for those three guys on pigs. So those three guys basically is the price of a get starting box. Them making it, raising it 10 bucks. Isn't still, it isn't that bad. I think uh Gore Grunt is are 79. The our boys are 53 and the war Chanter is 30 by himself, which is $162 previous saving was 77 now you're saving 67. so there are boxes that are going up in prices there are some boxes they're not going up in prices um they and you have to look at it in a business perspective they are losing money on those box sets we are gaining the advantage so they're trying to still please their customers as well as make a little bit more money in the aspects of those boxes i'm okay with that because i understand that I think it's okay. You're still saving money. So you're not spending, you know, $79 on three piggies. You can just buy the get starter box and you're still making out. Yep. So, um, but with that Intel, um, if anybody in chat is interested on what some of these get starter boxes uh, uh, that I can find, if you want to know the price difference, let me know in chat and I'll look it up and let you know. But I found a spreadsheet and it actually confirmed two get starter blocks, boxes that are coming out when I do not know. Um, but the uh, Maggotkin for Age of Sigmar, I have seen it. It is coming out. When is the whole different story? So that is awesome. And we, everybody's wondering where the Iden Deepkin get started boxes. It's in the list as well. That will be coming out when, again, I do not know. But I have seen it. Uh, so I, I know it's there. Um, so that something I wanted to, to hit at the, at the bottom because... I don't want people up and up or not play games because they raise the prices on a couple of box sets that are they're actually still saving money on. Well, I mean, you already know not not just based on our community, but you you know that people have already like said, "Oh, this is this is why I'm not coming." I'm glad I didn't come back to 40k or GW or whatever. Because like, I mean, there's gonna be negativity wherever you go. So yeah. Um, Raymond, I don't know. I'm looking right now to see if I can find out what's in the two brand new box sets. What I did see was the actual spreadsheet of all the get started boxes, and they were in the list. I don't know exactly what's in those two new box sets, um, but I know they're coming. I know they're coming. So I'll I'll just take a wild guess on what they're going to put in the maggot box. Well. It, it's not going to be the demon side because they have one. Yeah. So my guess is you're probably going to get probably two of the blight lords, right? Well, it, it's usually just a just refresh. It's usually a character, one character. Yeah. Usually there's one box set that is not. It's battle line, and then you'll get one other, quote unquote. Yeah. I'm just looking at their line. So my guess is you get probably maybe. Are the Blight Lords, the Blight Lords are just normal, right? They're just a, kind of a, what are they're the Blight Lord choices? Yeah, they're the, the they're battle line if you take a certain character. Okay. So my guess is you're probably going to get the future Blight Kings, right? Okay. 
you'll probably get a blight lord and then they'll probably throw in a character and my guess is the character you're going to bring is probably that gut rot spume would yeah, be I, think, I have a feeling it's going to be the plague lord because he's or, a or the lord of blight maybe oh yeah the lord of blight that's it that's it yeah that'd probably be him but right there that's 25 55 so you're up to 80 bucks plus 65 so yeah if it's a hundred dollar box set you're saving 50 bucks which really excites me because that's my seeker army off to the side that's going to take me forever to build but i have three characters the book the cards ready for that army so that gets starting box is amazing i can't wait because i need four boxes of those blight kings or blight the blight uh the the, the battle line like what is it 55 bucks for a box of five or something like that and my guess is probably for the Deepkin, you'll probably get the guard on the eels. Probably a normal, uh, normal unit of troops, and then probably for the the leader, it'll a it'll probably either be it'll be one of the twenty five dollar characters who's doing my guess. And they can go either way with this yeah. because when they brought out that box set for Christmas, it has two squads of, or a squad of eels, two sharks. A thing of thralls i think there were reavers and then it was the tide caster if i if my memory yeah. i might be off so i look at that box set i'm like okay what can be better what can be the offset because usually it's the offset on the good starter boxes yeah and so i'm thinking it's going to be a uh, it won't be a tide caster it'll be one of the other two characters on foot yeah it will either be uh this where it's going to be kind of hard because every box set usually is around 50 bucks that's what what's really crazy is the troop box set the eels 45 to 50 bucks per yeah i think it will be the eels and maybe a shark yeah no, that's true but we'll see but that's some good news they are on the rise so yeah. um for instance, for anybody that plays Space Wolves, it looks like their box set is not going up in price. What so, I, so they're going to just start manipulating some of the prices, so they're not just going to be across the board. Yeah, it's it's not everybody. So, <clears throat> let me go back down here. Yeah, uh, yeah. Space yeah. Wolves is eighty five bucks. Tyranids looks like it's ninety five. Um, Space Marine, regular Space Marine box set is ninety. So it, it's going to jump from anywhere between 85 where it's at to 95. It, it looks like I don't see anything over anything over 95. Yeah. So let, let me ask you this: What would you rather see, a hike in price or a lower models? Um, this goes for everybody in chat too. Like, would you guys rather spend the extra what 10 bucks, or would you rather have less models? Because I feel like spending 10 bucks, you still get a better deal than if you were to lose some models. I would second that motion. I think it's a better, it's better to spend the extra five to ten bucks to get a very money, a very saving in model count than it is. Yeah, I mean, no matter what, they already said that the savings is going to be anywhere from twenty to forty percent off. So you're no matter what, you're getting a deal on it. So yep. yeah, you might not be getting thirty percent. Okay, or you might not be getting twenty five percent, but you're still getting a percentage off. And you know, a lot of detractors will um, kind of go in and complain about GW doesn't do any sales. And there's a reason. There's an actual reason behind why they don't do sales, because for them it devalues their product. It's not like going and getting um, a pair of jeans at at Old Navy and they can just kind of recycle through it. Um, this stuff is this is premium models here, so but you're still getting 20 to 40% off. You're still getting a fantastic deal. So I'm not sure why, you know, the, the complaints are, some of them are pretty nasty. Other ones are just like, eh, no, I don't, I don't get it. I don't, it. It's one thing to raise a couple of dollars on. Okay. So for people that's been doing this since second end of second, third edition, or even beforehand, uh, I was talking with somebody when I was at the store was a couple about last week about a land raider i remember when a land raider was 32 dollars, i believe and that was in third edition if i remember where i was going to pick up a land raider and so you have to take account economy there's there's so much you still got to make a profit okay and you have employees you got so much to go for and so now what land raiders were like 80 something dollars mm. 
so the price yes has jumped over the years but so has the economy so has there's so much factors on that yeah the line meter right now is basically 74 dollars and 25 cents 74 okay okay yeah, I think when I started playing in third edition, when they came out with the plastic Land Raider kit, yeah. I think it was about fifty bucks. Uh, I thought it was thirty-two. I really do. I really. Well, I, was I, played, I played. I started playing in '99, so I'm not sure when that Land Raider kit came out, but I know the previous one used to be pretty cheap. It was really the previous one where the uh, Forge Worlds made kind of a, a, a new version of it. You used to get two land raiders per box, and if I recall, it was about fifty dollars for the two. Oh, I do remember that. Yeah, those I, right. Those were my favorite land raiders. I, I mean, right now they, I mean, they, they kind of look hokey, but oh, they're amazing. They, they, oh, they're absolutely amazing. And you know, somebody showed up with those and uh, wanted to play with them. I'd be like, yeah, you're good. Yeah, I mean, they're GW models or land raiders. You roll with those. Yep. You know, and I, I do sympathize. I do understand that, you know, the price hike sucks. It it yeah. does. But, uh, I mean, heck, this year alone, you know, um, my little government check, and I, got a, I got a pay increase. And, you know, and that right there covers the cost of any paints that I'm getting. Um, or if I decide to get a box, you know, and it, it's not... It's not, I don't think it's such a big deal, but I definitely understand why people are upset. I don't think we should be, people should be blowing up like they have been. And, and I'll tell you, I, I went over, when this happened, I went over to the Warhammer's Facebook page and just, just to take a look. And the community seemed pretty split uh, by it. There was, a, there was about the same amount of angry and okay and happy. Um, there's only, I'd say, one out of 10 angry comments. Uh, but usually those anger comments were, they're just piss poor, you know, I, I, <laughs> man, just like their, their logic behind it was, it's like talking to a flat earther and <laughs> so uh, their, their logic, <laughs> they're just knee deep in logic fallacies and, and some of their statements. And I'm just like, just, you know what, it's past your nap time. Go, go to bed, Todd. So, yeah, so pretty bad. This whole paint thing, right? I am so confused on what they say, 20 cents per pot? It's about 20 cents. It's 25 cents. Yeah. Oh, is it 25? Okay, so so here's my take. 25, I'm done. Here's my take. It's 25 cents, okay? Okay, unless you're starting a brand new army and you don't have the colors you need, you're, you're in a, that's the only time I really feel like when people drop a lot on paint. I have paints, like literally, that I've been using for 20 years, the same paint pot, and I've painted a ton of models. So, one, either y'all are just leaving paints open or just, like, dumping it out on your palette instead of, like, do what Duncan does and you see on all the videos where you can you know, take a little paint out and get a little wet, you know, water it down and paint. Because I am so confused on... How you could actually use that much paint? It's to where like you have to buy like six bottles of the same color. He, he I can not exaggerating. He literally that he still has that midnight blue from I don't know when, and he's still painting with it. Yes, it's, it's and, ridiculous. I'm just gonna say this: in the span since '99, and I started painting my Space Green Army, I probably have, I think I totaled everything up. I have about five thousand points of Space Green. I've used two pots of midnight blue. So I have one left, but I've literally bought like two pots my entire time. So, but no, I, I like, I'm just really confused on like, is it like, do, would y'all like to see a video of how to take care of your paint pots? I mean, because like, I really feel like, I really feel like it's an investment. So if you, if you treat your paints as an investment, then they will last you for a very, very long time. If you use them properly, even the washes and the inks, because I still have my flesh wash and my chestnut ink and I have it right here and they're about halfway gone and they're not dried up. Yeah, man. Don't ever let me in your house. I will steal those. Then I also have the one of the original, I don't know if it's original, but the addition of the white top Citadel 
I have the full line set, the full set of these that I show good that I use. John, I don't he, know why, but I'm going to say, don't let me in your house because I'm going to dry those pots up. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Ski, look at this right here, man. Yes. This, this is like Warpstone Glow, which is, yep. you know, it's changed up. But I've had this, this paint I bought when I originally started put, put paint playing. My favorite green for highlighting, Scorpion Goblin. Or scorpion green, not goblins. I'm thinking the other one. Yeah. Scorpion green. You know, I, I I'll tell you, TJ. I, or, oh, let's see what you got there first. John, John, tan flesh. Yes. And terracotta. terracotta. Yep. Two Don't ever invite me over to your house. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. I just feel like if yeah, you know you, how to use the paints, they're not going to run out on you. Yeah. Well, you know, I think um, I'm going to put the blame on just kind of like the current internet culture um people just want to be outraged just to be outraged i don't think um the fans are really or the customers are really that upset over a 25 or 25 cent markup um it, it, the vocal minority who might uh, put on their blog or reddit and start getting lots of hits because other people just want oh notice me and you know i'm gonna put here and argue too so people think i'm cool too and it just keeps <laughs> getting big bigger and bigger all because somebody just wants to complain and everybody else wants to be in on it you know to be recognized or whatever it's a mob yeah. mentality yeah it, and it, it's really sad because a lot of people really i would say most of the customers for games workshop really don't give a damn the only thing that they would probably want and uh, is for games workshop to switch to a dropper bottle yeah. i think that is the biggest I, and only a true complaint you know the, the paints are great yeah. um but you know dropper bottles might be a, a cool thing for them to invest in um I, I, I know I, oh go ahead sorry oh no it's it, it, um i understand that maybe the current pots you know that kind of helps them stay um uh help kind of this is how you can identify them it's kind of like a signature thing like space marine and um stormcast eternals now whatever Maybe that's why they're sticking to these pots, or maybe it's because you know they got stock in in that uh, that design or something, and they've got to go through it for like another 10, 15 years before they can switch. I don't know. But and I'm I'm fifty fifty on the dropper though because I have of course other paints uh, between model color, secret weapon paints. They're in dropper bottles. I, I enjoy them. I'm not gonna get me wrong. Depending on the color and the type of paint. The dropper bottles work on other types it doesn't work the way i want it it's just because i'm wasting paint um at least with the games workshop it's it, it, i think it goes both sides because you you have to you know one drop of paint one drop of water is great for when you're doing you know the the the, the 50 50s or two for one or whatever it is the conversion rates but if i just need a speckle of paint a dropper bottle i'm wasting more paint than i need at least with games sure. workshop i can just boop and 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 go for it. So, it, oh, it, I, I agree it. with you. Oh, sorry, true. what were we saying? I was just gonna say that's true because I, I've I've had it where I've taken these these squirt pots here like this, and I've been like, all right, just a little bit, and it was like kind of clogged slightly, and then it goes. <clears throat> I was like, ah, oh, cool. I just needed it for a lens, you know, <laughs> like a space marine lens. But it goes back yeah. down to taking care of your paints, right? Yeah. And I think that's uh, doing a video of how to take care of your paint pots would be uh, a good idea because I know I ruin a lot of paint pots. Yeah. I, I would know, I, watch it because I'm not very good with the paint pots. Um, I bought a lot of paints at one point and I went upstairs where they're just sitting up there and I'm like, oh, it's, it's completely dry. Or, man, that typhus corrosion, that crap doesn't like to last. That dries yeah. up. I still have two bottles filled. Well, if they're new, they're fine. No, I mean, I, I've used them. I will have one that's still sealed, but I have one that I've used since it first came out, and it's still perfect. Like I, I said, I will watch a video of taking care of it. <laughs> but, but it yeah, comes I, I, with medication. I honestly do. Yeah. Hey, Jonathan, Typhus Corrosion, man, I've had it for about, since it came out, still wet as could be. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Maybe, maybe because I don't keep it, I don't know, I keep it upstairs, I don't know. Seriously, because, though, I mean... I, I take on that mentality of like, oh, I'll just buy another pot and it's ruined. Okay. Um, and that's, you know, I've probably wasted, 
I don't know, probably about a hundred dollars over the years or more, just because I I don't take good care of those pots. I mean, I usually I burn through those pots of paints because I you know, up until a few months ago I was it was commissions after commission after commission after commission. Um, now I've got all these pots of paints around here, and I'm like, what? Where the hell did all these come from? <laughs> But yeah, I'd like to, especially I bought a whole bunch of new ones from Atomic Hobbies, and I don't want them to, the new ones to get ruined. Well, I have every month, I try to go in and I look at my paints. I either add a drop of water in them or I add a drop of uh, name and medium in it, shake it up, you know, maybe a little bit more than a month sometimes, depending what it is. But it's just, it, all it is, it's just like taking, car, taking care of your car. You know, you have to take you after a certain amount of miles. You need to change oil, or you need to check your tire pressure, or you got to gas up your in your gas up your vehicle after so many miles. Like, there's so much maintenance you have to do. So and after have, ten thousand miles, I should probably you know after ten thousand miles past my oil change, I probably should get an oil change. <laughs> Maybe. Hey, who knows? Yeah, how much oil you put in there, bud? Um, <laughs> but it, it all comes down to is just it is just taking care of your paints. Make sure they're not in the sunlight. Make sure they're not um, open. Um, it, it, just little things, little things that you don't realize you do that most people do and they don't realize it. And they're like, oh my God, my paints are bad. Well, did you clean out the top of your paint? So the lid closes all the way. Like there, there's a lot of little things you need to do, but you know, it, to each its own. Well, before we get too far off topic on this, yeah, yeah I think it? I'll, yeah, what's that? You guys see that? What is that? Right, see it's, not, it's not, it's not moving. Back it's up not, some. It's not focusing. Oh, you're going too quick. Give it a chance. Ooh, okay. ooh. That's my my marble. Okay, that looks a lot better than the last time I saw it. Okay. How in the hell did you do that? <laughs> <laughs> I made. Uh, I'm doing the gloss over it to make it look like polished marble. Oh. Yeah, that does look a lot better than last time we talked, Jonathan. Good. Okay. Um. But yeah, you know the the, the ultimately the price changes. Oh, it's yeah. still uh, on GW's part. They are a corporation. I know people get tired of hearing that, but they are. They've got to make money, and because uh, if they don't keep making money, they can't put out all this fantastic stuff we're getting. You know, and at the end of the day, we're you know the with the start collecting, we're still getting a fantastic product at a discount. Um, yeah, without them actually going on sale. And back in my day. What's that? Back in my day, we didn't have discounts on starter sets. Dude, even in my know, day. Five, I'm with you, TJ. We get all these good deals like you kids got nowadays. Look, Look Dude, Grandpa, I'm just go back. <laughs> even in my day, I remember when they were like, here's the bundle, and I priced it out, and I was like, wait a minute. This is the same as if I bought it single. <laughs> now they did put out some things, you know, like those Christmas battle forces and stuff that were always. Okay, well, those, those were good. Yeah, but overall, though, it, it's still a good deal, and this is a good move on GW's part. Um, and the paints, man, you're still getting the same quality paint, and for a quarter, your paint is paying a quarter more. You know, it's not, don't go to McDonald's for one week, and now you can pay for your paints probably for the whole year. Especially considering McDonald's is like probably like nearly ten dollars for a a, uh, um, a value meal or whatever, and it takes care of your paints for a year. <laughs> someone someone calls me the grumpy old man. <laughs> That's great. My birthday was on January sixth, so I just recently turned thirty eight. Oh, happy birthday! Um, the same Wait. day that they leaked. How old? Thirty eight. You young man. So young. TJ, you're the same age as me. <laughs> 38 since July, so you know. What I was going to say, I don't think 38 is right. Um, what? I don't think C is 38. I am 38. Are you 38? Yes, I am. 1981. Oh, uh, that's right. John, John's, John's the only really old one. John, I'm older than John. What? John, am I older than you? Yes. Am I not? I thought we. I thought you. I'm not. No, I'm. Uh, I'm 45. 
Oh yeah. man. Okay, never mind. I thought I was older than you. Yeah. Sorry, you don't get to be reign supreme as the oldest. I am so happy with that. <laughs> <laughs> um, but talking of that, on the same day as my birthday, GW did drop a video of the 80 days of Vigil Vigilus. Vigilus? Is that how you say it? Vig Vig Vigilus? Vigilus. Vigilus. Vig um, so they dropped a little teaser about some stuff. Um, I figure we can transition from AOS to 40K back to AOS kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah, of course. So G Dr. Owens, you want to dive into that by chance? Um, yeah. Um, I hope everybody's been hydrating, uh, drink some Gatorade because I'm about to drop a lot of salt. And not being salty, but everything uh, I'm about to tell you guys is really rumor heavy. Uh, some of the sources are good sources. Some of them are bad sources. Uh, a friend of mine, Eric, I don't want to say his last name just in case, but Eric um, compiled all this for me. Um, and oddly enough, I'm, uh, I guess some of this information actually came in to me today. I'm just going to combine it all together so that way nobody knows where the source came from. So, so I should go, breaking news, da -da 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 -da, fresh from the presses, fresh from the presses, breaking news. <laughs> oh, I love it. That's great. Now, okay, so this is Gene Stewart cold stuff, guys and gals. Um, I'm not going to go over this whole thing because it is a wall of text. And um, I probably want to shoot myself after this. A um, couple of the big things that looks like it's, I would say, is probably some of the most um, – accurate information is there's going to be a blip si uh, system you're going to get these tokens you'll place down on the on the board and they are um special um i'm guessing some sort of ambush markers and i guess that's where they uh, if i understood correctly that's where the cult units can pop up from hmm. um i don't know how much of that but the guy that uh, you've probably seen the miniature that's got the um, the little digital display, or not digital display, but the little map on his base. And that guy can move those blips around. That's pretty uh, cool. Yeah. Um, the guy with the loudspeaker, um, looks like he's going to be blocking deep strikers. They can't deep strike within 12 inches. So wait, wait, real quick on the bleeps. Is it like Space Hulk bleeps? I, I, I'm assuming it's probably something very similar. Okay. Yeah. Um, the, anyways, last speaker guy stops deep striking within 12 inches. Uh, the sniper guy, uh, you'll see the, the one miniature, it's on a bike, one of those, uh, dirt bikes. He's got a sniper rifle. That's actually an HQ unit. Which is an amazing uh, looking model, by the way. Yeah. Uh, that female Magnus or Magus, um, apparently is just actually just a Magus. It's just an alternate sculpt. And it looks like there are no named characters for Gene Stero Cult. Uh, probably, I, I don't, who knows, they might put something in there. You never know. Uh, looks like they'll be getting about six different cults, uh, kind of like chapter tax, tactics and such. Um, currently, there's still only one version of uh, the Gene Stealer Patriarch, uh, but he's going to have with the Warlord traits, all the different psychic abilities and whatnot. You'll be able to really customize uh, what he can do. Um, let's see here. Apparently, you probably, I'm sure you guys saw that terrain piece that's <laughs> got uh, the big giant drill. Yeah, yeah dude, that is cool. That Amazing. Is really cool. I seen it and I was like, I need that. You know, the, the week before or even a few days before, Clint and I were um, in, at Atomic Hobbies and we were talking about um they really need a some sort of big vehicle model because a, a big monster wouldn't make sense for gene stealer cults um unless they're like demon print size and clint was like yeah they they need to get like a big drill that they can um rise up out of the ground with you know and sure enough a couple days later they they show that freaking model it was amazing doesn't the sisters of um uh, silence for Fortro, don't they have that weird, like, drill, caterpillar looking thing? It looks like it's a drill. That's the, uh, actually, that drill head on that thing, it actually retracts, and that's how they um, exit. It's supposed to be like a shield type thing. 
Okay. Uh, but anyways, that uh, that scenery is supposed to cause earthquakes and can redeploy your troops anywhere. Now, I don't know if that's Gene Stiller specific, some of those rules, or if it's um, that's a generic uh, piece of, uh, uh, or kind of like the Sky Shield landing pad where you can pay for it and everything. Oh. Uh, iron Jaws. That's how I'm going to do. I'm going to use that for my Iron Jaw. Oh, wait, no, it's 40K. <laughs> uh, another thing, uh, you guys probably still a miniature where there's a, uh, um, looks like a Gene Stiller uh, cult character with um, all sorts of syringes and backpack. Everybody thinks he's a medic of some sort. Uh, the current rumor is that he actually is kind of like um, a grot herder for orcs. He actually herds aberrants and he can sit there and boost their abilities uh, if they're within a certain amount of inches of them, which could be very bad, like Boost their movement, plus one attack, plus one to their feel no pain, plus one to hit. So we've got and, a, a Gene Stiller coat herder. We've got yep. a knob uh, Gretchen herder. And then we have a Gitz squig herder. Yes. That is amazing. Lots of herding. <laughs> well, you know, and actually, we'll have the uh, Mistress of Pain or whatever she's called for the Sisters of Battle. She herds that. The sisters were pincha. Yes, yes. Oh man, this is great. I'm starting to see a theme this year. Yeah. <laughs> uh, a couple <laughs> other real quick things, so we can move on. But um, Gene Star Colts um, will be able to get a lot of the um, Astro Militarum stuff, mm -hmm. but there there's going to be certain restrictions. You're not going to be able to get the special characters. Uh, you're not going to be able to get their um, chapter traits or whatever they're called. Whatever it is they have, their chapter tactics. Um, Wanting to see a pask as a genius to call it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I think that'd be like common sense stuff. But apparently, people have asked, you know, oh, why can't I take pask? And it's like, because that's that's in a different. Oh god. Yeah. Uh, um, and it looks like if you take a detach, I don't, I didn't understand completely, but it looks like if you take a detachment of Imperial Guard, um, for with your genius to cults. You are going to get uh, a reduction in command points, mm. so no more CP battery for them. Oh, but okay. So how? Well, why would you take them? You, you would take them. To, you would take like a battalion, say a battalion for five for five command points. You know, you just that, take. That wouldn't make sense though. It'd be like so if you ran Tyranids, oh, I'm going to take AG, IG with Tyranid. Like. I just don't see why would. Well, I think, I think you can do that right now, anyways. Oh, I, I don't know. I mean, I'm just because they're supposed to be like, like they're supposed to be traders, you know, cult, um, yeah, cult infiltrators and stuff like that. Uh, but once again, everybody, take this with a grain of salt. Um, I, I imagine about another week, probably next week, we'll probably start seeing near the end of next week. Probably start seeing some Gene Steeler stuff pop up. Probably. Um. Uh, one of the other things, real quick here, is um, there's gonna have, it looks like they're gonna have a lot of stratagems and warlord traits, and probably some psychic powers that um, allows them to be moving and shooting heavy weapons without penalty. Uh, yeah, it seems to be a kind of a reoccurring thing I've been seeing, and, um, and I think that's what's gonna you're gonna see with those blips. Um, there, whenever you pop up from one of those blips, if that's what it's supposed to be you'll be able to pop up and it's not going to count as a movement penalty you're not deep striking or anything you're just hiding there and um I, but i imagine though if you get within a certain range of those blips they have to be revealed and whatever it is so um yeah there's a man there's so much stuff now do you think the gene slur cult with the soup and the salt that we're getting and how they came out when they first release. And I think we kind of talked this at the beginning is for all of us veteran players that's been a hobby for a while for a new army like that to get such a major upgrade uh, between models and rules all like very quick. I think in my, in my opinion, I think it's a very quick compared to all these other armies. Cause I know there's a bunch of other armies out there um, that still need help with either models newer models uh that need upgrading or newer units or whatnot um 
that this brand new army that they came back with getting all this perfect treatment it's going to be a very sophisticated army it sounds like yeah oh i agree uh, i don't think it's going to be uh, yeah we were talking about this earlier i don't think it's going to be as uh much of a finesse army as say the dark eldar uh, you know the com any combination of the eldar where you have to be very um on the ball with the certain sequence of play and psychic abilities and such um or you know the the big button masher army like um you know, by button masher i mean anybody sits there just hammers on the buttons you know when they're playing a fighting game or whatever uh like adeptus custodes wait you use your fingers i use my face <laughs> but i mean an adeptus custodes army is very not a very good finesse army you know it, it's really you could just sit there and it's definitely a newbie army um very newbie friendly uh but i would definitely put it below um dark eldar and probably above hmm, probably some of the the soup lists that require you know like uh the blood angel and guard soup list that requires a lot of things to function a certain way so you can pull off all the different shenanigans so yes to answer your question and, and for people that i'm going to put this in a different pers per perspective i looked at in a fantasy term as like gene circles as like a warlock or bard type character where you have to really time things and manipulate things and hit do things at the right time and compared to a warrior or uh a caster yeah like, oh yeah. warrior yeah. hard to play <laughs> it's uh, it's somewhere in between it's um i i would say it's yeah i, I don't even know how to rate it that, that may be something i should look into is as maybe a future episode is kind of come up with a rating system on like finesse to you know not you know non-finesse armies you know what would be easiest to be able to get into and play and whatnot uh, um, for, we, we could do a breakdown on that too with like affordability um, yeah you know what i mean like because uh, i talked to someone who actually got turned off to the hobby uh sunday actually came to the shop and i i talked to him he got turned off because his friend got him to start orcs oh okay. mm -hmm. and i was like why <laughs> like that's that's a horde army that's so it's overwhelming when you're a brand new modeler you know well, sorry, well, yeah. I would never recommend orcs for someone who just started. Well, it, uh, see, see, I'm a, I'm a 50 50 guy on that though, because there are horde armies out there between 40k uh, and Age of Sigmar. Um, but in those horde armies, you can tailor it. It might not be competitive, quote unquote, but you could tailor it to a different type of non horde army. Like orcs in 40k, you can just do a vehicle type army and, and have a lower model count. Uh, yeah, Age of yeah. Sigmar, you can do, people want to do orcs, um, you got three factions of orcs you can do. You can do the regular orcs, the Iron Jaws, and Bone Splitters. You can do Iron Jaws, and I have already made a list where the model count is very, very low. It's a hard-hitting list, but it's not super competitive. Mm -hmm. So it's, I mean, I don't know, I think every army has a capability of multiple armies to be designed, yeah. but it depends on what... But uh, your focus. But if someone starts a game, what do they always say? Marines. going to win me. What's the best? Oh. You know. Oh, yeah. I, I, yeah. And it just depends on the person is, is how they're going to take that, you know? Like, yeah. with me, when I started in fifth, I got told not to play Chaos because they weren't that good. They were in the middle army, middle tier. Okay. <clears throat> and I almost didn't play Chaos because of it, but I'm glad I went. You went Nurgle. With my love and joy, actually, I started with Black Legion, which is really Nurgle at heart. I mean, <laughs> well, I, I'm that's sorry. funny too. I'm a Nurgle guy too. I might not have an army. It's funny that you said that because I actually took all the, uh, the a lot of the Black Legion ones, put a bunch of green stuff on them, and repainted them. Really? Mm -hmm. That is amazing. So a lot of my Black Legion are now uh, Plague Marines. See, well, I'll, I'll tell you. Games Workshop has probably one of the best things that they teach all their managers and uh, or their even their reserve managers is when the customers come in and they're like, I want to get involved. I don't know anything about this, or I want to find you know the best the 
best answer, the best question you could ask him is, which one looks the coolest to you? Oh, mm -hmm. gosh. That's what, I, I, that's what I got asked. Wait, stop yeah, us. And, right? What's that? It goes back to stomp us or stomp us. That's the, that's the one. <laughs> in, 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 in a way, really, especially in eighth edition right now, I'm sure Age of Sigmar is in a very good place like this, too, is you can pretty much pick any army and it's going to be it is going to be competitive in some ways and if you're yeah so if you are um brand new to the hobby then it's definitely you definitely should go with what what's the coolest because mm -hmm. you're going to be coming in and and tr if you're coming in to try to be a, a hardcore tournament player brand new to this hobby um you are going to have a very difficult time no matter how many videos you watch um, how many net lists you look at, uh, you need practical app uh, on this. You need to be down and playing those games. You need to have the right combination. And if you are already got your mindset on exactly what, then you're not asking this question. So this is really geared for any of those players. And if you got friends, I think, that are wanting to play, um, let them take a look at all the different armies. Take them to the web or, or guide them to the website and let them take a look at our all the armies and if he if he or she says oh my god these you know tyranids look freaking awesome because they look like the aliens from the different alien movies i want to play them okay let them man you know and, and if they end up not liking it they'll yeah. get another army like every single one of us oh yeah right now i'm i'm working on let's see i've got bones footer orcs iron shot orcs uh <laughs> deep kin that i'm working on and i have dirt and dwarfs and I'm going to be work getting started probably in the next couple of months on another new army. Um, but the problem I have, and, and John, I agree with you to 100%. Of course. But at the exact same time, there's a lot of disappointment, though. Because, yeah. and, and, and you have to let people know this ahead of time, is, and I'm not going to go today's meta. I, I'm not even going to touch on that. I'm going to touch on just in a general aspect, is... What I was told back in the day, the best army to ever get started in to understand the game, and it it is a very an army that is so versatile that you can make a competitive army and you can play like a fun army is like Space Marines. A Space Marine chapter of any type is a very good starting point for any new person to play because they get the basic rules. They don't have to memorize a bunch of stuff. Um, this is back before they changed the the four to hit, three to wound. This is the 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 yeah. weapon skill versus weapon skill ballistic skill like that whole other stuff now since i was in that time frame and i know how it is now i very en i enjoy the system that they went to with both games now it's easier mm -hmm. to memorize things back then i wouldn't have a problem memorize things but since my injury in the military and had the brain injury and stuff it's hard for me to get in some of these other super competitive armies that i would love to it's too much brain power for me. And that's not because I don't want it. I don't want to try. It's because it's just because of my capabilities of this thing up here. Sometimes I forget so much um, and not on purpose. It just happens. So I kind of stick with some armies that are simpler and usually not super competitive just because I play them really well. And I roll very well. Most of the time people think I'm playing competitively. I'll tell you right now, Iron Jaws is a very mediocre army. In general, you're not going to see him winning tournaments unless people, everybody rolled really bad. <laughs> I hate to say that, but it, it, it is what it is. Um, and it's okay. Um, but there's other armies out there, like, um, I'm going to go on both sides. Uh, AOS, uh, Deepkin. Right now, the competitive army list are ran one way. I'm designing a different army on a different aspect, and it will never be competitive because the way the rules are, point cost, and, and, and so, being a veteran player, I see where the problem is. If they fix it, it will be so competitive. On um, 40K, Grey Knights. Grey Knights can be so competitive if they fix things with them, yeah. make things better. They are an amazing army that's been around since close to the beginning that is such the stories and everything about them is amazing. But now you have custodes that overshadow them. Yeah. And I hate that. And that's where it's really... I, I'm going to agree with you is get to somebody, say, what? look at all this stuff that Games Workshop's got. 
Mm-hmm. If you have the money, let's look at four drill too. I, I'm going to throw it out there. Yeah. Let's look at everything. What catches your eye? How do you like to play? Who yeah. do you want to play? What models look the greatest? And just go for it because later on you're going to change anyway. Mm-hmm. I, I agree with you 100%. Uh, ultimately, just go with what you like and don't let your buddies, your girlfriend, mom, dad, whatever influence you. You just pick what looks best to you and make it work because later on you are definitely going to pick another army. So what and you're it, trying to it, say is you do you, boo-boo. You do you, boo-boo. We need a, we need a bumper sticker. That's it. Yes. That's a bumper sticker right there. Done. 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 That's my next tattoo. <laughs> you do you, boo-boo. No, but but joking aside, I, I'm actually thankful that it wasn't the store owner when I first bought on my models. It was a friend who played Grey Knights who got me into 40K. And he goes, you know, you need to look at something that you're going to like because you're going to spend hours with it in your face. Yeah, better like what you're looking at, you know. <laughs> That's with With that being funny... It's very true. Even though I own almost every army, I was painting my Eldar, and and I had I stopped mm. because I was just like these are dumb. Not not I just didn't like what I was doing. I I wasn't having fun, and I was realizing when I'm forcing myself to paint, I don't make a good product, and I'm not having a good time. It becomes a chore. I'm yeah. I'm literally doing a chore. And already have enough tasks in my day when this is supposed to be relaxing for me. So I actually bundled up all my Eldar, except the ones that were painted, and I was selling my whole Eldar army just because I just – and I did play them. So I, I started them in the Escalation League, and I was just like, I am not a fan how they play. And I play the crap out of Dark Eldar. Love Dark Eldar to death. Enjoy the models. Enjoy how they play. They take so much, like you said, finesse. You have to be good with what you're doing because your your a bolter can take down your raider. You know, like no problem. A bunch of bolter shots will shoot down that raider without issue. Yep. And uh, you know, it, it's just I I enjoy playing that, and it's a challenge for me. Also, the models are really cool, but like with Eldar, for me, it didn't feel like a challenge. You know, I'm just sitting there, and I just have this ridiculous firepower. Oh, I rolled a six. Now it does, like, negative, what, three or whatever, something, whatever it was. But it's just one of those things, like, th- this is solely my opinion. I, I, I was like, man, I just, I, I didn't want to do it anymore. And when I started realizing it became a chore, I'm like, nope, this is my hobby. It's fun. It's separate than a chore. And that's, that's why I'm selling them. Um, you know, about the whole box thing, though, I think, uh, and I agree with you, Jonathan, on that. Um, I think, though, maybe in future episodes, especially after LVO, uh, especially if I can uh, figure out how to do that whole disc, <laughs> the whole Discord um, appearance, we can get a nice overlay for everybody to see. We can uh, maybe every week, especially since LVO is really going to. I would say for the for, until Adepticon, maybe even a little bit after Adepticon, it's going to set the pace of what armies, at least on the competitive side of things, is going to be selling. Um, and that's something that we could talk about. Like you said, um, take all of our ideas here and talk about you know what, take an AOS army, a 40k army, talk about value, talk about tactics and everything, and um, kind of prepare people for it. Um, before I go any further, I wanted to say I've got two more Gene Silver call things since we got sidetracked. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we had a very special. Hold, hold on, hold on. Hold on. I just, I just want to. Oh, oh wait, there's TJ. Starting TJ, when did you get here? Talking. I didn't want to interrupt. <laughs> so, so, so the first thing I like to tell new users is uh, who's just yeah. starting to play is what looks cool, like all y'all said. You got to go and see what looks cool. The second thing is. Have them look at troops. Have them look at battle line units oh, yep. because yep. those are the units that you are going to paint the most. Yep. With any how this army, how anything works out, the meta always turns back to you having to have 
at least three unit three troops for uh 40k and then was it three to four battle line units most yes. of the time for a 2000 point game ski yes yes sir three it's usually three to four you always i always recommend by the max yeah the force so you're always good yep so so really like if if you're a new player and and let's say you're happening to listen to one of the greatest live shows on the on the internet and you're listening to us go out search the website go pick up the troops find out what your troops are your battle line units for each game and see which one you like of those because guess what you're going to have three to five of those units and that's going to be a lot of your army because yep. really when it comes down to it uh the more competitive builds and a lot of stuff you need those battle line units or troop choices and then the next thing i say look at look at your hqs yes what leads your army because like i said everyone loves painting hq models and so you're going to be painting a lot of those so uh uh th that's my thoughts on it is definitely look at uh what is your battle line or your troop choices and see which one you really look at and you want to paint because you are going to paint the most of those all those cool elite choices all this the cool stuff in aos it's not battle line you know you're only going to have a couple of those units on the table normally when it comes down to your army and your actual army so don't think you're going to have oh my god i'm going to have three rip i'm going to have five riptides on, on the battlefield no you, and max you're going to have probably two or three but you are going to have a lot of top fire warriors <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> so you better like painting top fire warriors or pathfinders well pathfinders are fast attack right yeah yeah, so or breacher squad. Breachers are still troops, but you're, you're basically going to be painting Tau Fire Warriors. So you're going to have about 30 to 50 of them out there. So basically, go look at troops and see which one you like. Like when I when I picked it, I wanted to play Corn Demons. A, I wanted to paint red, and B, I like the way Blood Letters look. Uh, Nerg, uh, Plague Bearers, Slanesh Demons, and Zinch did not look cool to me. It wasn't something that I liked. I really liked. The way uh, blood letters look, so I was like, I'm gonna play, I'm gonna pl play blood letters for my demon. Army. So, other than that, guys, that's my two thoughts. We can move on now to the other gene stealer, gene, gene well, stealer cult. Real, real quick though, I'm gonna caveat on TJ because he's a perfect example of something that is good for new and old pit players. TJ has a very, very competitive army for AOS. Uh, uh, corn. Um, Blades of Corn Army is a very, very, very competitive list. I've seen so much of them, and it's an amazing army. There is a lot of micromanaging between characters and battle line and and behemoths, but they're in I, I they're in that top ten of competitive armies. That is just an amazing thing. But TJ is the type of person that he doesn't usually build his armies around that competitive super competitive list he makes it fun and worthy of playing that he enjoys the models the units maybe it's only the stuff he has but he does the best he can of what he has but he has a very competitive army that's another way that a lot of people do it too um, and i respect anybody and everybody that does what they want to do with their armies um, you can always find two versions of your army majority of all armies to be non-competitive and competitive just to keep that in mind like you could play eldar and have it be a very non-competitive army oh yeah you're right but i don't know how but you're right competitive. It's very quick and easy to do but you know it's it's just like anything it's 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 if you want to play competitively you want you you want to get out of that mindset that you're going to be winning your your games when you first start playing this game because these games both these games AOS and 40k yeah. are not forgiving games when you make a mistake and which are the two most important phases and we can get into this later but is your deployment and your first movement yeah. is huge and your hero phase or general's phase or hq abilities or whatever it is yeah your deployment costs you the game i've had it cost me the game yep. but and i recommend people going to conventions on, on a caveat that don't okay. play if you've never played in a super crab game go play in a very 
different don't play in the championships play in a different game but take the time to go to go see what people are doing in the championships learn watch videos uh read do your research buy the products buy the books do your homework like that's what's going to make you a competitive player if you do that if you're just going to use Battlescribe or the AOS app and not do any homework and expect to win every game because you copied a guy's list on the internet or you watch somebody win in it, you know, uh, GT at uh, Nova and 40K, that that's not going to win you the game. You need the time, the experience, and you got to put the sweat behind it. Did you say experience? No. You said experience. Experience. You need. You're going to need that there experience. Experience. But, all right, I'm done. I just get so okay. passionate with this stuff because I really enjoy this hobby. I've done it for so long, so I'm sorry. Well, well that's, you know, we've got a lot of cumulated, we've got a lot of knowledge amongst the four of us. And, you know, we, we, we've all experienced not only the gameplay on both sides, but also the buying, uh, you know, people buying into it and hearing the disappointment and stuff. So we're not just rambling on. We're just trying to pass on a lot of good knowledge here so people don't, either a interfere with their friend trying to buy into an army or um, be have it interfered with them trying to get it if that like, makes any sense like the guy you said jonathan about playing orcs i think orcs can be a starter army it's just it needs to be told to that person you're like hey you like orc boys you're gonna need about 50 of them <laughs> and movement trays and movement trays but i mean if you like orc boys Orcs are going to be your friend, you know? Yeah. John, yeah I mean, I the guy had already, I think he moved on or something else, or he paints. I, I don't remember what it was, but it, I'm talking about this was something done that was like 10 years ago or something, 15 years ago. Yeah. But 15 years ago, what was I getting beat by orcs with? Oh, Mega Knobs. Mega Knobs and Gaz Gazgul was whooping my tail more than the boys were back in the, about 10 years ago. Yeah. The boys were just more for of frustration back then. Yep. <laughs> Wait, hold it. You have, I have to kill 30 more of these goddamn things? <laughs> and then by the time you kill the boys, you're like, oh, I've killed, oh, God. Okay, my army's dead. Here comes the Yep. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to get on this so we can move on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're killing me. Okay. Uh, the last two things about these uh, Genius Star cults, once again, we're back on that and take out the grain of salt. Right back. Uh, looks like the best warlord trait. I'm going to read it um, as they as it was passed to me. Um, there's a warlord trait that prevents enemy units from firing Overwatch at your warlord, and you roll 3d6 when charging, drop the lowest. That looks like probably the best trait. Um, then they looks like they're getting into some sort of agents of Vex style. Um, stratagem. Uh oh. I'm not very familiar with that, but actually, so I got three things. And it's, I have to take a look at the models, uh, but apparently, there's a guy with some sort of stick or staff or something. Um, he is like a, um, he buffs all the genes to anybody with genes to a cult. He has them plus one to attack within six inches of them. So that could be really freaking huge. You know, I mean, like uh, genes, getting gene stealers actually in range. Uh, so I think they get like three attacks a piece. So. Yeah, they do. And last thing, even though I said it's the last thing a couple things ago, it um, it looks like they're going to be having access to the Bane Blade and Shadow Sword. Wow. That well, is having you say that, John. Don't they already have access to the main blade right now? I don't know. I think I they do. Know. I'll be honest. I don't know too much about them. Yeah, there's a guy at the store who just bought a shadow sword. Uh, okay. Just for his, uh, for his guys. That just sounds ridiculous. Gene Steeler stealing a main blade? Oh, did you guys happen to see the message that uh, Ski sent? Oh, the the picture, right? Of uh, what the what the secret yeah hidey hole is. Hmm. 
anyways, that's all I've got for um, rumors right now. It's been, I'll tell you, it's been kind of weird trying to get rumors out of, um, mm. out of Nottingham lately. Uh, the last, I'd say the last month has been, I don't know if it's my uh, contact, my friend has been too busy. Maybe he got caught or maybe he's trying to avoid getting caught. And I think Ski's kind of had some problems, might've had some problems getting some information too. Maybe but he might've, he might be back on track, but um, yeah, it's really, really weird. And I apologize. I usually have solid, roughly solid rumors. And the only one I got to give you guys is the loose uh, gene stealer cult stuff that you could, some of you can find online. Some of that was passed on to me uh, from my friend. So right now, I don't know, dudes. It's, uh, I think gene stealer cult is still going to be good. I, I don't think they're going to be probably top meta army, but I think they are going to be, uh, they're going to be like orcs. They're going to shake, shake everything up and really smart players are going to figure them out. So yeah, I actually, I could see him as a top meta player. I think this might be the year of the Xenos. Yep. Uh, and I, I hope for it. I hope yeah. for the change because not until that new Primaris codex drops. Well, yeah, that's good. <laughs> but <laughs> I just, I just feel this, this, that army has very high potential, hopefully potential. We don't know until it's on the table. That's, that's the worst part is everything looks great on paper. No matter no, they'll, the they'll have their heyday until sisters drop. Sisters is going to wreck shop. Yeah, I, I think I, if they don't wreck shop um, play wise for some weird reason, they're going to wreck shop uh, sales wise. Oh yes, they. I think this is going to be one of their most record. I, I, I would not be surprised if this is not a record setting army uh, sales wise, and I, I, I imagine they'll. Probably the quarter after they're released, depending on when they do the release, uh, they'll probably put a report out, and we'll see um, them talking about that. Which, which kind of falls into the next part for cells because of the new goblins for Age of Sigmar that everybody that plays goblins, I'm sorry, gets uh, between Spider Fang gets regular gets trolls. This week, this Saturday, is the floodgates of that with the new rules. And I think – I don't know how cells are going to do. I don't know how Atomic has been with cells. But the downside, there's all these people that have these armies between sisters or the gets that have been sitting on – or Grey Knights. I, I'm going to throw that in there. They've been sitting on these models forever and hoping for the new codex to be great. And so far, it's been 0-1. Because Grey Knight's Codex was great, but it's not that great for the meta. Right, TJ? Oh, I love Grey Knights. They're a great army. But, <laughs> but for the meta, they're not so great? No, no. The, the, there's No, it's... Yeah, it's kind of like, let's make Grey Knights great again. Okay, see? So <laughs> that's what I'm hoping for is... Let's let's get above... Let's bat over 50% because we've got, what, Sisters next? Or the end of the... Well, I'm going to say fall... I'm gonna say fall of November time frame. Oh, I'm really I, I I'm kind of, I'm gonna kind of go against the flow here. I think it's gonna be early summer. You think? You think okay, okay, okay. Well, we should place a bet. Well, you know, gambling's illegal, sir. Oh, okay. Well, whoever loses should accidentally shape their head. Accidentally. Uh, I, I've shaved my head so many times in the military. It wouldn't be one. It, it'd be. It, it doesn't affect me at all. All right. We should I'm do just, our eyebrows. I mean, you'll you'll be right or I'll be wrong. You know. <laughs> <laughs> um. But let's talk about the new gets for Age of Sigma. Well, actually, wait, wait. Uh, rumor engine. I just want to point this out. The new rumor engine for GW is the most slap in the face ever. Yeah. Did you see it? Yeah, it's adamant, guys. It, it's either a flamer or a flamer. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, what is this? Oh, it's a flamer. Okay, good rumor. <laughs> <laughs> like, sorry, I, I have it on my screen. I'm looking at it. I'm going, yeah, that's not really a really good rumor engine, you know? But the question is, what vehicle 
does it go on? Or is it a space marine or something dead on a base with a flamer? Or is it a model with a flamer? I, it, it's a flamer. I, I'm going to agree with Leon in the chat right now. Oh. A flamer for Primaris. Oh, no. That, or, or it's a flamer for sisters. Or, or it is a flamer for Gene Circle. Nope, I know what it is. I don't like that one. I think it's a flamer for uh, for sisters. <laughs> I think it goes on. I think it goes on a rhino. I can see that. How about a flyer with a flamer? Ooh, like behind. <laughs> it's a pretty big flamer. Well, yeah. it could be a close up. Oh, what if it's a what if it's a flamer for, uh, like he said, either like a Primaris Marine, or it's on a, a Primaris transport, or on a Sisters of Battle Rhino. Just joking, guys. It's for the new Admech transport. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> hey, did you see that that uh, Admech character? Oh yeah. yeah. The oh, oh, that fat guy. I call him the fat guy of the of the crew. The new tech priest. Yes. Oh, that's gonna be. I know. I want that. It has the it has the um, the gun that gets better over distance. I think it is right. The yeah, farther away, the better it is. It does look like a conversion beamer. That's it, conversion beamer. That's what I thought it was. Yeah, I'm very excited for that. Cool. As much as I love my tech priest and my tech priest dominance. That gives me that. I mean, another HQ choice. That's good. All right. So, you know, it's in our title, and I don't think we talked about it yet. About the the, uh, the little shadow figure we got. Mm -hmm. Oh, I got prices. Ha ha. <laughs> so, so we actually got divulged more information during the show of what the item is. Um. And you know, a lot of people, it's up in the air that people think it was squats because I immediately thought it was squats. It looked like a squat outline of a, you know, of a dwarfy marine with a giant pack. You know what I mean? Like I was like, man, that's that's a squat, and you got to make space on your shelf. However, uh, ski, I'll let you I'll let you have the fame since you found it. Oh no, go for it, man. Go for it. Take it. Just, just well, give me the credit, but you can take it. All right. Well, uh, it is in fact a Funko Pop. What'd you call me? <laughs> <laughs> Cut you a Funko Pop. That sounds racist. Funko Pop, buddy. Funko. Um, so basically, it's a Funko Pop. Uh, the only two that. Uh, some leaks from a French Amazon France. You probably just go there and look it up. But it's a Warhammer 40k Blood Claw Pack Leader, and then there is a Warhammer 40k Primaris Intercessor. And um, in the picture, it cuts it off. There is a Dark Angels Veteran as well. Ooh, Ooh I like this. Um, whatever, 18. Is that a dot or a comma? <laughs> eighteen some eighteen something ten is is what it's looking like. How much it is? And so it's probably if that's a euro. It's probably like twenty bucks. Okay. Yeah, well, it's whatever the other ones are. That, that's oh, yeah. usually the price of them. I mean, I'm not gonna lie. I own a couple of my favorite characters. So I, I do too. I've got uh, Tiny Tina from Borderlands. Yes. Nice. Yes. Most dangerous thirteen-year-old in the universe. Our my clan, um, me and my best friend. I have to just say this: uh, when we went played in um, a couple of tournaments in Hawaii, we did team tournaments, and our team was uh, TTB Tiny Tina Bandits, and we had white shirts made with her logo on it. Oh, I love it. So, come here. Well, um, last week we were talking about how. Games Workshop is doing this blitz, this media blitz across so many different platforms. They are prepping themselves for something big. I, I know Funko Pops doesn't sound like 
something massive, but look at all their video games, their um, little movies that they're doing, or the unofficial movies that are that are coming out, the um, those adventure books that they've got. They they are starting a, a blitzkrieg across all different types of uh, media and pro and uh, cus uh, customers. So I think something big is on the horizon. Yeah, they're, they're in pop culture. They want it. They went on. They want in on the pop culture. that's going yeah. on. Oh yeah. I mean, I'm yeah, still right on. And and then to be fair, you know what? If it opens up new doors for people to come through to our hobby, totally interested. Yeah. That, that, that's that's their whole goal is to get more people into store and to to buy in because as much as they love the veterans that keep coming back. You know, the, the people that spend the most money are the brand new people. On average, they spend about $1,000 a year, uh, their, their first year in sales when they buy into the hobby. And after that, it drops down increment, excuse me, incrementally. So, yeah, the more people they can get in to store to spread the gospel of uh, Warhammer, I think that'd be cool. But I, I th I'm still predicting something. We're going to see something pretty amazing in 2020. Hey, how do you like? Camera? Are you a psychic? Hey, um, yeah. I hey, feel John. like it. What's that? Oh, sorry, John. John, I oh. knew what you're going to say because he's a psychic. <laughs> uh, yeah, just hold, hold hold on. We don't need to talk about that, TJ. Um, okay. Yeah. <laughs> You know, so I had somebody um, ask me because I've actually I've, had, I've been contacted by a, since I've left Games Workshop. I've actually been contacted twice, not recently, but about you know um, releasing information that I've gotten. Uh, I've been asked who my um, source was at one point. I'm like, I don't work for you anymore. No disrespect, um, but you know, I've been in a hobby for 30 years. A lot of people have. Um, I've been in working in the this type of industry for. You know the retail industry for a while. Uh oh, uh oh! It's that time of the month. Not with games work shipped in anything. It's I'm You're just right. watching the trends, and you start watching the trends and how the company is proceeding. And if you you know take a step back and take out your own bias and everything, you know what, getting all fancy and like break it down logically, you can start predicting how things are going to go. Yep, and. Um, maybe I should have gone into stocks. I probably should have did that. Well, no, because okay. because I look at it too, man. I always tell everybody, like me, when one, one of my best friends in Arizona, we would sit and talk all the time on what they need to do or what they're going to do, and because we pay attention over the years since I've been starting it, it's the same. It's a better strategy overall. Like it's it's yeah. cloaking you know, smoking smoking shadows or smoke and mirrors, whatever you want to call it. But yeah. the core of it. It's still the same. They do the exact same thing for everything every year. The good example, something that it's it's about eighty percent. And and Dr. John might agree with me on this one, is when a new codex comes out, expect the units that don't people do not use, they're going to make them better in the next codex. Usually nine times out of ten, that's what's going to happen because of fact it's an inventory problem at that point. So they're going to make rules for a unit that they can't sell better than most of the other army so they can sell the inventory that's sitting in their warehouse. And then the next edition, they'll nerf them and they'll make something else better. And that's how it works. It really does. Can you say chapter approved? I mean, chapter approved is a great selling tool. Yep. How else do we move this stock? Oh, let's just put out some price adjustments yep. and all of a sudden just watch stuff that would normally not sell. I mean, man, seventh edition, fantastic. Probably the best. I mean, it's crazy edition rules wise and real headache, especially if you're a TO. I can only imagine if you're a regular, like, oh, there goes again. Um, from a marketing perspective, holy crap, they were genius. Uh, I mean, they pushed so much, and I, I hate using this term, but crappy models or crappy not crappy models crappy units yep. that did not see a lot of play 
Um, they're really cool looking and uh, the fluff and everything's great, but play wise, they were not popular. And then all of a sudden you got these formations, like take six of these and you get plus one to here and you get a free upgrade. And it's like, well, shoot, I need six of these. The, the best army that I remember that was so devastating for people was Dark Eldar when they did witches. Everybody ran witches all the time. Yeah. And then they nerfed them and made Scourges better. And everybody was like, what just happened? Um, <laughs> because Scourges were crap for so long, they were tired of it in the inventory. Yeah. Uh, beautiful, GW. Beautiful. Yeah, I mean... I mean, it's just like they're like, man, rhinos are not selling. <laughs> and they're like, well, uh, you have a dozen <laughs> battle company. Then guess what? All your rhinos are free. And everyone's like, I'm going to go buy rhinos. Or, <laughs> or buy all the space rhinos. Wars. Like, oh, you want to do uh, mechanical you know, space wolves. Hey, if you buy a rhino, all the upgrades are free if you take this formation. Mm. Yep. Or, or the... Uh, the the, there was uh, tax. tax if you guys remember like you get this really big cool formation but you got to bring six of this stupid unit that no one ever played and that, <laughs> that was with my necrons and i wanted to build the thing but i had to bring like six tomb blades luckily i own six tomb blades and well, i was like <laughs> they made tomb blades better at that point with the um blast template that ignore cover remember yeah, I think they were better. That was better than what they were prior. I and they were they were sold out. Yeah, just because that one rule, they changed the way a weapon worked on one unit, and everybody's like, "Oh my gosh!" And then like, here's a formation, and no one can get them because they're all sold out. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure we got off track again, but and I apologize. That's probably me that got got us off track. It's entertaining. Yeah, yeah. I have to say though that GW is on the right track, and I'm, I'm well, very anxious in a good way to see what they've got in store for us. Me, me personally, I'm thinking it's going to be somewhere. It's going to be on uh, on the screen. We're going to see some live action stuff in the in the probably the next year or two. Well, I, that's what I'm thinking. I'm hoping because there's been a couple um, um, Russian um, groups that have done some live action um, ISK 40K stuff, which was mm -hmm. really good. Even though I can't understand them, I've watched them. Yeah. Um, and I, I was very, very impressed. Yep. Um, oh. Sorry. Go ahead. No, go ahead. Go ahead. Um, okay. I'm sure everybody online uh, by now has seen uh, or have heard of the Death of Hope series. Um, it's a, a guy's uh, doing a full fan-made movie gw has said that he can do it unofficially so they gave him approval death of hope is some of the most amazing stuff i've seen however there's this uh, other thing um i think you can just look up astartes um i i'll to see if i can get the link up on the on the fmp site but there's a there are about two three minute videos and this guy basically is doing these astarte films short films and the animation is freaking amazing and, and he really paid attention to stuff like how big the corridors are on the ship for the space marine to walk down and it and got the movements down right as they're as they're walking it doesn't look clunky it looks natural and how the humans would be passing by them in the hallway and that, everything was just really spot on and I, i'm going to try to get that up on the fmp facebook page um but th that's what i'm thinking you know, we're going to see something pretty amazing in the next year or two. And we've been talking about this, even, you know, even as a group or as individuals with friends, um, people that's been in this hobby forever. Um, I know I've been talking about this for a very long time where they need the, the market of, of video. They need the market of the audiobooks they've done. They need the market of video games they've done. They can be better, but they, everybody has to start from a spot. Yeah, can, and, and it goes with hobbying. And I, I'm gonna throw this out to we're like Space Marine. I, mean, I know we talked this before, and I'll make it really quick. Space Marine was a great movie for its time at the time for them to step in and do something for the first time ever. Um, I think it was it was fluff was messed up. There's there was issues with it, but overall it was an achievement for that company, and I enjoy that. 
I represent that. I accomplished them. I give them a high five for doing it. Your own opinion is your own, and that is your opinion, and no one can take that from you. They can only get better from there. If they get worse, then there is a problem, but they haven't. They've gotten better with everything they've done over the years. The way the models look, the way they they bring out the product, the 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 new way models are on sprues, the model lines, the paint. Like I can go on for days about what they've improved since I've started this hobby. They can only improve from now. Like I'm what I will I will it will blow my mind if they ever make an anime that is a graphic anime for 40k or even Age of Sigmar. It would be amazing because they have the universe that they could do that. It would be epic. Give it time. You never know. So give everything a shot. Don't criticize something. Look at everything. Go and do your research. Sit down. Watch it. See what else people's done. I, you, you have to really look outside the box instead of just judging things in one way, in one light. Like... Look at the other side of the fence is what I'm probably basically I'm trying to say. It just gets better. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I just can't wait. I'm excited. What do you think, TJ? I don't know. <laughs> no, dude, no, 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 to be honest with you, like I I really want to see live action. I, I honestly really want to see someone I want to see a live action like 40k movie. I think it's got to be focused more on Imperial Guardsmen than Space Marines, but the Space Marines can be a major player in it. But yeah, uh, yeah I don't know. That's that's my only uh, opinion on what I really want to see from GW. I want to see a giant Marvel Universe type for 40k production. So you don't think they should start with just the Inquisition first? Maybe. I mean, honest to God, I mean they could. They could write the Horus Heresy like into a movie, oh, like yeah. like you start out with like the first three books and put that maybe into one movie, and like mm -hmm. that would be amazing. That would be insane. I mean, because those those first three books are some of the best books I think GW's ever released. That that those first three three novels and the Horus Heresy are amazing. And then and then Fulgrim's book four, right? Yeah, Fulgrim's book four, I think. Yeah. Which was amazing by itself. <laughs> oh gosh! But but just in general, the whole like the way the Horus Heresy starts is is absolutely amazing. I mean, if they did that, woo, woo, even the anime series of it would be amazing. Yeah, something, dude. Anime series, the Horus Heresy. That would be amazing. Yeah. That'd be all. Like how they did, uh, like Castlevania. Oh my God! Don't get me like, started. Like the, like the American anime kind of style. Yep. Mm. Oh, yeah. that would be pretty good. Not like yeah. full-on anime. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. like the yeah, cutesy stuff, but like the Castlevania. Because I just got done with season two. It's incredible. Yep. Oh, uh, ooh. Uh. All right. Well, now we have a lull. I'm sure you guys seen this. So this is my chain arm for my spooky nights. You mean you're not done with your night yet? Bro, I just got them. Oh, no, we can have them. <laughs> Look. I just see blue. I see two colors, Jonathan. Uh, yeah, because I'm still working on it. There, are you gonna shade? Are you gonna shade that blue thing with blue? Uh, you know what's funny? This is the color it came in, but I, I was airbrushing it, and I realized that was the color it was. <laughs> I was like, oh, because you can see it on the metal here, Yeah. the glow, because that was all airbrushed. But I was like, man, that looks exactly how the plastic came. Yeah. There's the other chainsaw, chain arm. Don't forget to wash it with blue, man. It'll really help you get that depth in there. You get the, <laughs> Got to wash it with blue get the, the extra depth. What are you doing there? Very nice. I got my Stellan done, so now I'm working on my Castellan robots. And well, I just went through uh, my third or my final uh, test run for uh, 
my custodes paint scheme and yeah, it's garbage. So I, are you gonna, you're going to paint all your custodes in three weeks? Yeah, uh, all 21 of them. I, but I'm now, now I've settled on one. Um, so I'm going to go back to that. It's a lot easier to do um, and faster. Um, so, Donna, I got five for you, buddy. Five what? Five custodes painted gold for you if you need them. Oh, no, <laughs> no, thank you. I'm, I'm actually doing this weird, not even weird, it's just a kind of a, a dark copper and gold contrasting color scheme. It paints up really fast. It just comes down to when I do the highlights, that's going to take probably about 30 minutes per model. I think I can do the model in about an hour and a half each. So about 36, maybe 40 hours of painting for all the custodes. You're, yeah. you're amazing, man. Does that disappoint you because it's going to take you so long? No, it's scaring me that it's going to take me that long. <laughs> and <laughs> I've procrastinated this long. Because uh, I still wow. got a night night to do after that, unless I. All right, so I'm playing the tournament next week, and then the week after that at, at Atomic, and if the night does not perform by then, then it's out, and I've got to scramble to put in five uh, custo terminators. Not five custodes bikes. Um, I thought about that, but it. Uh, you know, at this point, my theme of my army is just out the freaking window. So I could pretty much do what I want. When, when did you just change the army and just run like, I don't know, pow? No, I, I still have a soul. You, <laughs> you know what, John? You know what you should do? That. You know what army you should do? Space Marines. How about an all Primaris army? I've thought about it. Crimson <laughs> Fist. <laughs> I, I was cleaning out my uh, cleaning out Narnia, which is my uh, pantry, and um, I found uh, more Primaris Marines, and I was like, I now got sixty Primaris Marines. What could I do? Yeah, I've got a Primarian uh, box set with at least about half of it still there, John. Oh, you guys are killing me! And I got a box now of uh, was it Burning Prospero just sitting here with a Contemptor and a Dreadnought, other Dreadnought. And um, uh, yeah, other, I have other stuff too in that box that is like no. a goodie bag. No, no, I'm good. I'm I'm sticking with my guns. I can do these 21 models. I like the way the li way the custodes play. Cool. So, and it's good for me because I don't like to do worry about subtleties and tactics and strategy. Just run up and hit somebody. Well, John, John, pretty cool, right? You want me to drop it off at the shop this weekend? What's that? Your slaughter priest. Yes. Oh, yeah. Because that one, I'm gonna have to. That's gonna take some converting. Converting, a lot of converting. Holy crap. Um. So, I guess last but not least would be uh, Git and trolls and and on some Gits, man. Those models are amazing. Some uh, ones that are pretty bad. So. So everybody should know this by now. I know you know a lot of people in here play 40K. Some of us play Age Sigmar. But this Saturday, the first wave of the new um, gets for Age Sigmar, a.k.a. goblins and squigs and spiders and trolls armies coming out, um, which, again, I want to put this in perspective, is Beast of Chaos was the first book that they grabbed everything and pulled it back together. They gave them a new model, which was the totem whatever it was if it was called but it's the totem that they didn't have um, but it was part of the rules gets are the next iteration of let's take all these goblins aka gets and throw some trolls in there and put them back underneath one umbrella which is exciting even if you're not a goblin gets trolls squig player this is something to look at as a future thing that they're doing because we still need dwarfs. Dwarfs need to be good again. Um, Dirt and dwarfs, fireside dwarfs, overlords. Like we need a book that evolves around dwarfs. You have all the high elf players, the wood elf players, the free people. The like, they need to start keep going with this theme and grabbing these armies and putting them under one roof so people can play them and enjoy them. But right now we have goblins, or gits. Sorry, gits, squigs. It's gits, squigs, and trolls or trogoths, I guess. 
um, the new name, um, which are amazing, which this book, I can't, I have the point costs of all the models. I've got the battalions, uh, I've got some rules, uh, but I think this book is going to be like the beast of chaos book, but I think a little bit better because there are at least three different armies that you can build in this book at the minimum and be focused. You have a Tragoth army, you got the Goblin uh, Spider army, and then you've got the Squig army. And then you can combine all three too. So you can do whatever you want with this. Um, I, I think it's gonna be amazing, man. Um, I, I'm looking at the trolls. I'm looking at rules for the, the Tragoths or the trolls. A lot of new models. Um, it looks like they have at least, I know they have one battalion. Um, it looks pretty interesting. Um, but I, I'm very excited for this because I know a lot of people that play the Arachnic goblins and some amazing painted armies, but now they have focus rules for that army with the Legion's abilities, characters. Um, I know some people have played the squig armies and we're waiting for this and now they're getting this amazing army because they're redoing a lot of new models too like the squig mangler that squig mangler's been out the old model's been out and it was fine cast before that i i don't remember if it was no it's always been fine cast yeah, now they have a new cast. model that is either it's probably gonna be a dual box which is regular squigith or squig mangler or the character you got the fanatics that have been redone and you'll have two box. You have a box with that. I, I was going to talk to you about this, John. I found out is the fanatics is going to be a box, which should be building two different units. You have the fanatics with the metal ball and chain, and then you'll have the fanatics with the exploding mushroom balls. I guess they call it. So it's which way you ever want to build them. Um, so th this is <laughs> this is a very good direction that Games Workshop is taking with another old army. They're renaming things because they want their own IP. They're releasing some new models and some new rules for this and bringing everything back underneath one book again, you know, uniting this. Um, and it gives you a lot of options. You've got endless spells, you've got terrain piece, you've got trolls, uh, a troll army, a low model count. It's gonna be like Beast Call Raiders. It's, it's the, the name character that you have to run to make a troll army, which I'm looking at doing, it's not confirmed. Um, he's 300 points. That's, we follow that. He is the big giant, like the the night size troll. Wow, he's 300 points. Um, he's unique because he's named. Um, then you have the uh, let me find it on my little screen. The Dankhold Tragos, which are the He's got the insect in one hand and he's got like that boulder spikes thing in his other hand. I think he's like, he, they paint up with like the, the, the flesh tone skin. Yeah. He is not unique. Everybody thought he was going to be like a unique character. He's not unique. He's just the name of the type of troll. He is a unit of one at 220 points for that one model. And you can have up to three in one unit. <laughs> So right there, you add three of those and the leader. You already half of your two thousand point army is already done. Four models. Then you have. Like the then you have the. What was that, John? I might have to play Age of Sigmar. See. Then then you have the Fellwater Tragos, which are the green fatty, like look like they're puking. Mm -hmm. um, they're a hundred and sixty points for three. And if Dankhold Trogoth is your leader, they become battle line as well. So if you're already going troll themed, that is how you do it. Um, but there are three per 160 points, and they're 12 max of 12 in a unit. Okay, is that the are those the ones the old style trolls? They got like the fins, fish fins, and stuff like that. Yep, and they're green. So yes, yeah, so the only way to run the troll army is to have them as your battle line not yet i'm there's still there, oh, wait, there's sorry. more there's more um then you've got the rock gut tragos which are the the newer version of the old version uh of the ones going rocks and everything 
Um, they are uh, minimum size of three, maximum size of 12, 160 points. They are as well battle line if you take that character. Um, and that's those are all the trolls that are on the um, point thing, as well as they have a battalion, and they have the most expensive battalion too, which is this is crazy. It's 180 points for this battalion, AKA for the 40K players, it would be a formation um, for seventh edition and aspects of comparisons, but you pay the 180 points for the ability basically. Um, and it's called the Trog Herd. So something I wanna add in that Trog Herd is you have to take, or you have an, you can take zero to two giants in that battalion. The giants are actually in the War Scroll uh, in this book, so you can actually take giants in this in this army. The L Guzzlers, they're 160 points per L Guzzler. So that is for people that love low model count and love the new models and want to try something different. The Troll Army, I'm I'm excited for it. I'm with you. I'm I'm with you on this because I already have one giant. Um. Now, for the other people that are playing, like the squigs and the goblins and stuff, you guys, I'm going to tell you right now, movement trays are going to be your best friends. <laughs> like, I'm going to tell you that right now. If you want to get into squigs and you want to get into goblins, you better start just buying movement trays because you're going to need them. Um, example, the squig hurt or the squig hoppers, and that's the new models with the goblins around the squigs. They have the jousting and they have the armor and they look like little mini knights. Amazing models again. Uh, minimum squad of five, maximum squad of 20. Each squad of five is 90 points. And, you they, and you can have them as battle line as long as, uh, let's see, battle line, if Gloom Spike gets army, if General has a giant cave squig or a mangler squig mount. So there's your focus. You want to run those guys? This is how you do it. Like this is this is why I really love Age of Sigmar is they really change the dynamic of everything you want to do depending on the character you run changes the way the army runs. Um, do you know what's funny, Ski? When I see this, the spider ones, you, you know, the spider ones, uh, the spider gets, my wife is like so scared of spiders but like it'd be funny to just be like, honey, what do you think of this new model I'm working on? <laughs> person you're playing with, you're like, scared of spiders? You're like, yeah, okay, I got an army for you. And you just have and you're just like, here's my get spider army. And the person just across the table just cringes. That'd be great. Because, well, for the spiders, it looks like you have, you have scuttle, Scuttle boss on a gigantic spottle spider. You've got the shaman on the spider still. You've got the uh, spider with a flinger. I guess it's like some kind of like you know throw goblin gets throwing stuff off of them. Um, oh no! Like to be honest with you, I just want to get one of the big gigantic spiders yep. and be like, honey, I'm gonna start working on this new model. What do you think? But the spiders, yeah, the spiders are still, yeah, they're, they're all the spiders are in there. Um, it's good to have like just a detachment of spiders, just because they look amazing. Oh yeah. Well, so if you run the spider riders, which are five four hundred points, and you probably at a minimum, I'm gonna I'm gonna throw this out there for anybody that's looking at doing spiders. If we're gonna do the spider riders, don't do a minimum of five per unit. It's usually a ten man unit, so you're yeah. gonna spend two hundred points for a ten man unit. Um, it's worth it. Trust me. Um, two, if battle, if they're going to be battle line. If your army, um, if your general is a spider fang, and what it means by spider fang in your uh, keywords, if your general has a spider fang keyword as a unique hero, or whatever, then those those riders, spider riders, are your battle line, which are great. Um. Uh, the coolest thing that I'm there's a box that I'm gonna buy, and I'm not doing goblins. I might do squigs. I don't know. I, I'm up in the air with this. This is amazing. 
is you have the squad of grots shamans that are one box set it's one two three four it's five grots and you've got um the for the unit it's 240 points to and they come together like they're separate unit they're separate models and they're all unique but you have to buy them in points as a whole which is really i've never seen this they've never do this this is this is amazing so you you spend 240 points you get all those rot shaman type characters um and this is what they, it says their models must be taking as a set for a total of 240 points although taking as a set each is a, a separate unit so you don't have to worry about running them together you can run them off wherever you want and they'll all have their own special rules but you have to buy them as a set and i believe they have a battalion um that they're in and it's called gaba palooza <laughs> <laughs> and that's 110 points are you are you serious it's actually called gaba palooza yep gaba gaba palooza <laughs> god i love these guys um they're so, so there's so much the, the, the arachnids they have the arachnid spider cluster it's 100 points for their battalion i don't know what's in that battalion but that's another one um the endless spells range from 50 points up to 80 points uh oh wait sorry 30 points to 80 points um the scenery is just let people know it's a minimum of one maximum one so you can only have one piece of their scenery in your army for your army huh. um the maggot can set is you can minimum have one uh if you have other things and you do you can summon more than one but for goblins it looks like it's only one um what else we got there we got that 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 the gut yep the the el guzzlers gargantuans are in the book they're well they're at least in the point values and they're right there so they are part of the army as well um let's see boom 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 boom, boom. i mean I, I think it's gonna be amazing like hands down But if you're doing goblins, you're gonna the goblins are cheap. You're gonna run them. If you're gonna do a goblin arm or a, a goblin gets army, I'm not an expert, so this is just what I'm looking at until I see the full rules. They're very cheap units. So what that tells me in a general aspect before you can see the rules when I look at anything, they're cheap units, minimum size. Uh, for instance, shooters. No wait, stabas, stabas. Stabas are goblins with spears or gets with spears. It's 20, a minimum squad of 20 at 130 points. Maximum size is 60 for 360 points. Oof. So I would I would look at the 20 man squad, look at the rules, and I would probably bust them up to at least probably 40. Because they probably have something, some cool rule more than 20 they get something probably yeah don't quote me but that's usually the trend on a lot of things uh, if you're going to do squigs um squig manglers squig hoppers the squig herders are great um for the squig herders it's a minimum squad uh, squad of six maximum of 24. there's 70 points for a squad of five or a squad of six and their battle line if your gloom spike gets army if your general is moon clan so if you want to take minimum battle line and you want to take a bunch of crazy other stuff that's probably going to be the way to do it four squads three squads of squig herders and then they're just going to take everything else so i i think it's an amazing step so I love about Age of Sigmar, man. They have so many cool armies that come out. Uh, they, come out they come out with so many options that it gives you so many different things you can do with one army. Someone, um, was it Dog Z asked the chat, do they still have the flying goblins? Um, I don't the, see the, the Doom Divers is what he's probably asking, and I do not see those. Um, spider riders 
Rachnik Squigs. Unless they change their names, and I don't know, I do not see Doom Divers. I think they're more for uh, the the normal orc army, right? Um, but the the normal orc army doesn't even have a. They're just destruction. Yeah. You, my um my favorite model with those um, what are they called? The guys that are swinging around the chain balls. The fanatics. Fanatics, like one of them, if you look close, has an imprint of one of the Sigmarites masks imprinted into the metal, a reverse from it smashing into its face. So so in fantasy, uh, just to give you some idea about how fun fanatics were, back in 7th edition fantasy, uh, big games, formations, uh, line and uh, uh, the uh, rank and file armies, Fanatics hid inside a squad of goblins. When they came out, they could kill anything, basically. They were devastating models. But they can also hurt you, it, it, but they were nasty. And so that model itself represents that, how crazy and nasty those are. And I think there's a model where one guy's laying on the side of a base, just laying there, and it looks like he OD'd on mushrooms. Mm -hmm. That's what this, this, this whole book's about, like, is mushrooms. and But... Oh, okay, so this is okay. I, I, hmm, how do I put this? Fluff wise, book is very weird because the Rachnit gets like the video they showed in Games Workshop. The Rachnit gets look at uh, Gorkamorka differently than the gets the goblins do, like the regular goblins. So you have Arachnid goblins, you got squid goblins. Um, anybody in destruction looks at their god differently, even though it's the same god, they all see it differently. So it's kind of weird seeing three different armies, quote unquote, factions um, in one book when it comes to them aligning to go fight stuff because they all three of them look at it differently. Yep. So like the Beast Claw Raiders look at it one way and they're their own army. Iron Jaws, one way. Beast, uh, Bone Splitter Orcs, one way. So that it's it's cool that they're doing this, but it's really weird how they're how they're they look at things differently, but they're all together. It's just really Kind of cool but confusing. So, and the squig dice. You, you, I mean, that speaks for itself. You you can't go wrong with squid dice. <laughs> yep. I didn't, man, those look so cool to roll. Mine will be in Saturday. So, you all want to roll them? You're more than welcome to. They will come with me to LVO as well. Just yeah. to have. I want to touch them. More welcome to. I won't roll them, Ski. I won't even touch them. I'll just look at them. No, no. Everybody from F and P, they it doesn't matter. It's 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 the F and P squig dice. <laughs> Dude, I am so excited to see a full army of squigs. I, I am too. I, I I'm in a spot that I need to build a very competitive army. But the problem I'm having with this is I can't build something that everybody else runs, which means I'll never be able to make a competitive army. <laughs> because everybody that runs a competitive army usually runs around the same thing, usually. Um and I think the spider finger outs will still be competitive. I think the squid rots or squid gets will be very competitive. I want to do trolls, but I think they're going to run in the same problem with a lot of low model count armies. And I don't think they can withstand five turns of gameplay. That's my biggest concern. I mean, it's all about objectives. Yep. And if they can, then I'm so for it. Like I'm going to do it. If they can, if they can perform the way I think they should, then I'm, I'm about a troll army. Um, but and if I do a troll army, Mr. Jonathan, they are going to be painted and designed around Death Guard. Nice. That's pretty uh, cool. Disgusting resilience, trolls. I think it matches in my brain. Um, 
but I, I just don't think it's going to be viable. I, I mean, I'm not going to count with any low model count army. Um, I don't know about with 40k with the knight armies. Don't they run in the same problem yeah. as if if someone rolls better than you? And I, I hate to say this, but if they roll better than you, then they usually die quicker, right? I mean, yeah. Unfortunately, yeah. I mean, low model count mar uh, models armies are it's it's matchup based, right? It depends on who your matchup is. It's just like with John playing custodies, you know if. If it's a good matchup, he'll do really well. But if he gets something that he's not matched up well against, then his custodians are going to get pretty much cleaned off the table. Yep. So I think that's it. I think that's just in general, it's just having a small elite army. You have a lot of cool big stuff. Once that big stuff starts dying, because you feel it. Yeah, you feel it. I, and I felt that at Adepticon when I went with the three knights were my big targets, and then I had the MSU Space Wolf Rhino Razorback list, which worked out amazingly out of every single game except for one. And once he killed the knights, you're right. Once he killed my knights, it was basically game over. Yeah, you lose it. So, All right. I don't um, know. I think one thing I just tap into, um, I got some of this information from – um, our Age of Sigmar group in Texas as a whole. Um, and I'm just going to, for you guys that don't know, there's probably not a, people, a lot of, you know, people that are watching, if you're interested, uh, we are doing the uh, Texas Masters. It's already started off. Dallas already did their first tournament. Scores are in. Um, rankings are in. Um, but the AOS community in Texas is amazing as a whole, not even as a game store now. Like, I... I'm part of this bigger picture, and it's amazing. We've got people coming in from Dallas and from San Antonio to come down and play in either uh, our tournament or Fat Ogre's tournament here this month. Awesome. So, and we've got people from here going up to one of those two places to play as well. So, nice. actually becoming a bigger Thing. It's about the, the community, not about the stores or about the 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 groups. It's a it's an overall thing now. So yeah, it's always about the community. Yep. Uh, I want to do a shout out if it's okay to the uh, uh, Sons of Slambo. They're an amazing group of people. Um, uh, Jonathan uh, is a he's the one that runs War Gamers Con last year for AOS. Uh, he is the president of the Texas Master. He is an amazing person. Not me. Not you. Yeah, I mean, I'm an amazing person, but that's not me. He's described yes. currently. Um, and then Matt from Dallas, uh, him and his group is again. I'm going to do another shout out. They have been doing an amazing job with helping out as well for the Masters and good people. Yeah. Questions, answers, uh, anything. The, these these groups are not. They're there to help the community, their local communities, just like us, right? For FMP, we are a local community, but we reach out to anybody and everybody. Um, help out anybody and everybody where, where, where we can, right? Um, they're the same way. Um, I, I just can't wait to hook up with these communities again. If it's uh, LVO, Wargamers Con, Adepticon, Warzone, um, people are excited, and that's what it's about. People helping each other out, playing games, working together, and having fun. Yep. That's how we do it. That's true, Ski. Very true. So, did, uh, you, say, did you say true Ski? True Ski? Yeah. Ski. So, Ski, man, I really have a question for you when it comes to Age of Sigma. Yes, sir. What army are you going to pick, man? Pick for the finish. Oh, I, or I have an army. I have an army that's already finished. I have two okay. armies. So the next army is Deepkin. Well, okay. So Deepkin, I have my army. Uh, besides onesies and twosies that I want to pick up for the army. Uh huh. But I'm very torn with that army because the fact that to be competitive with that army, you have to play in one way. Yeah. It really is very disappointing in that, that aspect because 
again, TJ, you're just like me. Me and you have so much in common when it comes to that. Like, I hate doing what everybody else is doing, and I like to have fuff. I have an idea. I want it to work, and it can work, but because of point values or rules, it doesn't work the way you think it works. It should work, kind of like Ray Knights, right? Yep. It seems like the design team had a very specific goal in mind when it came to DPN. Yes, very, very much so. And so it's like that's the way the Army's going to play, and there's not a darn thing you can do about it. it yep, until they fix it. Yep. Uh, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to work in the Army slowly. I have it. I spent mm -hmm. the money on it. But I'm going to make it look amazing. That's that's what that Army's going to be, and the amazing paint job Army. But I am looking for a competitive Army. I want to do Trolls. I'll say it now um, because I think the models are great. Low model count. It would be great, but I need to find an army. Um, I could do Nurgle, but that's in a very expensive army for competitive. And I like my paint job. I don't do the Nurgle green for AOS. I do the blue zombie look, um, and people love it. And I, that's what I want to do for the rest of the army, but it's very expensive because for five guys, it's like 55 bucks, and I need like – that's just – I need 20 of them just in general. And that's not counting everything else. <laughs> um, but there's been some good deals that I almost looked at doing corn. But if I do corn, it's there's a certain way to do it with a couple variations. And I'm trying to find that niche. I'm trying to find my niche is what I'm trying to do. And that, I, that's why I want to I want to push to everybody. And if it's AOS, 40k, Necromunda, whatever. Find your niche that you enjoy and go with it. We just went full circle. What was the original thing? You do you, boo-boo. <laughs> My new tattoo. We full circled. That's why for, for the team tournament, I have my model count is 18 models. For Age of Sigmar LVO. Wow. And it's not one drop because I'm not taking any War Scroll Battalions. It's, it's one, two, three, four, five. It's a six drop army. So non competitive, but it's going to be fun. Yeah, I need to interrupt, gents. I've got to uh, log off. Um, so, but everybody else, I'll see you next week. You guys, I'll see eh, whenever. <laughs> my well, problem. See you this Friday, Jonathan. Are you working? Yeah, yeah, I'll be up there Friday, and I'll be up there Friday as well to I'll do. Painting. Be there. I'm just gonna. <laughs> no, I, I think I'll be there painting. I'm gonna be helping somebody work on their LVO army. Okay. At, while I'm helping work on mine. And then we've got the Age of Sigmar first of the year Texas Master recording Age of Sigmar tournament Saturday. Well, you guys keep talking. I'm logging off. I got to. Um, it's not see you, man. It's getting late. We, uh, yeah. Later, yeah. buddy. Uh, so, Ski. Yes, sir. I'll let you wrap it up since it is getting late. Um, I'm, I'm good. I just wanted to go over some stuff on, on the gets. Um, uh, let's see here. We have anything in chat? Does the Goomsmith's book have any allies? <laughs> Um, the allies for the Gooms the Gloomsfoot gets is Bonesfoot Orcs, Git Mob, Grotz, and the Greenskins, which is very just totally out there because Iron Jaws can't touch them, Beast Claw Raiders can't touch them, um, unless you're doing destruction, of course. Um, but that is that is very interesting. Bonesfooters, Git Mob, Grotz, and Greenskins. Those are your three allies for that book. Huh. You're right. That is actually pretty interesting, to be honest with you. Yeah. Like, I mean, I'm actually kind of happy because I run, I have a, a fully painted bone splitter army. Mm -hmm. Fully painted. And that might, this might be my answer to my problems with that army. Instead of going a different route, maybe I can go another different route. <laughs> and go full bone splitters? Well, I can, well, I was going to go boom, full bone splitters with some help of a rogue idol, but maybe this army as allies, the get, gloom spike gets might work better. 
I, I, I don't know. I have to look at things now. Um, well, the good thing. Ask that question. Yeah. Let's see here. What uh, other structure on that is? Uh, the only thing I, I'm going to tell before we, we close this off, a lot of the bravery of the gets are very low. And I'm talking in the ranges of like four to six <laughs> bravery. And mostly I'm thinking four is 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 what their bravery is, I think. Um, which means you need to take a bigger model count unit. Um, which kind of caveats on the like TJ asked me about like Deepkin is the reason I'm having problems with my Deepkin is when you have a one model a one wound model with a bravery that's way lower and you kill two dudes and your whole unit disappears, there's a problem. In the in a gist of things. Because they hit hard. They're like a glass cannon, but in aspects of this new army, it doesn't make sense. So but we'll see. We're still waiting on a general's handbook for next year, so we'll see how that turns out. So, yeah, there could be some changes in there, maybe. Uh, I'm just excited for LVO to see what's at LVO for Age of Sigmar. That is my, I mean, I'm excited for 40k and for you guys and and all that. But for me personally, it is to see some gorgeous armies for LVO, see what people are playing, communicate, network, and see the crazy ideas people come up with. I think you're going to see a lot of that at LVO, especially with Age of Sigmar. I think it's going to be, I think you're going to have a blast for those days that you get to walk around and watch. Oh, yeah. List and watch these people play. And, it's and, going to be amazing for you. Well, this is my first LVO. I, I did Adepticon um, when they came back to Chicago, and I played in the championship. I played in the team tournament. And walking in unknowing, and I did good. You know, I placed 40th over, what's it, like uh, hundreds of people. It was great. I did, but that's because I'm a veteran player, not because I was to, reading the internet or doing anything meta. It was just what I chose to do. And what got me where I got was playing the game and figuring things out for myself. Um, for LVO, I didn't want to play the championship because I want to see how things are. I want to see the community. I want to meet people. I want to watch some games. I want to learn. I want to take a step back. And so I can take what I've learned and express it and help other people and myself. Yep. So I recommend that for everybody. Go to conventions. You don't have to plan them. Go. Go walk around. Like I said earlier, watch communicate, network. You'll meet some of the most amazing players in this hobby. You will. And I'm not saying competitive players where they have a stick up their butt. I'm talking about honest mm -hmm. to God, true, heartful, intelligent, uh, fun players. I mean, there's a guy I met at Depticon that drank. Uh, I met him in line to pick up my VIP badge and we talked about something and when I played in the championship or no, the team tournament, it was a Saturday. He walked up to me and says, man, you look like you're having a rough time. First game, 10 o'clock, 9 o'clock in the morning against Demons. It was a horrible game. It, we got we got wrecked. He came up to me and says, man, look like you're having a hard time. Here, pulls out a shot of Jameson and then fills up a cup of Heineken out of his own personal keg in his backpack and just gave it to me. I only met the gay, a guy two days ago prior to that. And we hung out. We talked BS the whole time. We went out to dinner. Like it was the most coolest thing. And we stay where we, he goes every year to Adepticon now, but we, we stay in contact. So that is, I think, the biggest part is what people miss when they hear all the things about tournaments and they hear about tournament players is they miss that, uh, that camaraderie that you actually get at tournaments where you're having a great guy with your opponent, a great game, and then you bust out with, hey, man, you want to go grab some food? And they're like, yeah, sure. And then you have like a three-hour conversation, and it winds up y'all hang out for the rest of the night. Yep. Yep. I agree. I remember, I remember the first time meeting you guys, and I played 
Jonathan, I think I played first. And I think so. it was an amazing army. Uh, you're running the assassins with, or you're running assassins and Grey Knights. Grey Knight, that's right. Uh -huh. Holy cow, that's right. And I made mistakes. Mm -hmm. And I always have a disclaimer when I tell people this. If people don't know, and I, I don't want, I'm, this is not me saying, hey, I have a, I'm using this as a crutch. I had a brain injury when I was in the army because I got blown up. So I forget things, not on purpose. It's not because I'm trying to cheat. I just forget things. It's just how it is. Jonathan was an amazing opponent. He, I, you did beat me too, mm -hmm. um, but it was a fun game. Yeah. Excellent, fun. I rolled some good dice. He rolled some amazing dice. He <laughs> has some great tactics. I killed assassins. That's what I basically did that game. <laughs> yep. um, but that's how I met him. Um, yeah, you were playing your uh, your space wolves. Yes, with the knight. Yep. Um, and I learned a bunch from, and that's how you you have to play people that either are on the same level or better than you. How do I, I? Okay, actually, let me let me rephrase this. You have to play games with people. You can't go on the internet. You can't sit there and watch videos all the time. You have to at least play the game. You have to have the product. You have to play good players to learn your army. Good players, bad players, it's all the same. It doesn't matter. Because that's the only way you're going to learn to improve your game and memorize your army. For me, it takes me a lot longer to memorize armies because of fact of I have my own issues with my own brain. Before I got injured, it was easier. I've... I've been. I have some problems with my my uh, iron draws and fan and age of sigmar. When people call me on the spot and I look it up, I'm like, oh my god, I feel so bad. But I I take responsibility for that and I say I'm so sorry. And people understand that. You have to learn. You got to play. So it was just clear and communicate. Yeah, as long as you can communicate, you're good. Because like are, like half the time people make rule errors. They're not purposely doing it. No. But there are those guys out there that make us look bad as a community. Yep. And those are the outliers. And it really hurts. Like, was that saying one bad apple spoils the whole bunch? Yep. All it takes is one bad apple sometimes, right? Yep. It, it does. It really does. <laughs> it really does. Um, but I want to thank Jonathan and TJ and Dr. Owens and Mr. Miller and um, Mr. Ben and, uh, and, and this community to accept me into the fray of this amazing group of people. And I have been slacking and I, I apologize to everybody with battle reports, but it, it's just rough. I, I, you know, real life and finding th people and it, learning how to do things, but oh, don't worry, Steve. We'll get some battle reports coming this new year. Oh yeah, I do have an idea, and I already kind of talked to Jonathan about this. And I got to talk to people I want to do, but there might be some nights a week, one night a week, or once a month that it's an Age of Sigmar only chat where it might be me with some guys from um, Sons of Slambo and the Citadel and. Um, just people from different communities together talking about Age of Sigmar. Oh, cool. Um, yep. And the mass, Texas Masters, and it's FMP that we, I might be live streaming on FMP, but it's not just FMP, it's the community. So is the community, man. FMP is just something that I built yes, just for the idea of community. There was no, any underlining, you know, I got asked one time from a, a game store owner is like, well, what's your bottom line? What's your end game? What's your end goal? I was like, I, I don't have one. <laughs> I, I this is what I love to do, and I love to give back to the community. No, and and uh, you know, it's helped me learn. It's uh, it's helped me be a better player, better painter. I and I even joke with TJ because I still have to do the uh, the uh, the scorching on my barrels. And okay. my boss bents, and I have watched that F and P video. I don't know how many times. <laughs> I didn't do it. TJ did it, and I was like, "Oh, that's the wash." 
you know, of how to do it. So I've watched TJ's video multiple times and I'm part of the channel. You know, it's just one of those things is like, it's always, it's always kind of been for the community, you know? It, it is. And, and, you know, Warzone, it's always been a 40K thing, right? Yeah. Or, or well, 40K, major 40K, 30K, and other games, right? There's not been any AOS. And so I'm taking time out of my schedule to run it. Yep. Because we need it as a community. And it's not about FMP running Age of Sigmar at Warzone. It's Warzone, Age of Sigmar. That's all it is. And that's all it, it comes down to. And, yeah. and that's what I tell people. It says, yes, I'm a part of FMP, and I love being a part of this community. And so I want to thank the two people that are on tonight. Thank you. As well as the other individuals that are part of FMP, because I enjoy this. You're good, man. That's what it's for. You know, it makes you feel good when you'll post a picture on FMP or something or something I'm working on. And I've had people message me or say on the comment that I've inspired them to do X, Y, or Z. And that's amazing. Yeah. Just something that I'm working on and I share it, you know, and it's inspired other people to be like, oh, how'd you do that? You know, I, want, I love this. I'm taking this idea. It's like, dude, take away. Yeah, you I'm know, it's, it's, a, it's a collective effort. Yep. yep. Um, I've learned from you guys. I mean, I, we all have our, our niches where we've come from, right? It, what people don't realize with me, I've learned how to paint three times. And yeah. that's, I'm not saying I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm like, oh, this is an inspiration story. And I know it's getting late. When I started the hobby, I learned how to paint. I stopped the hobby because I joined the military. Not stopped it, but I was, there's a big wall. And then I started painting off and on. When I got my brain injury, all that knowledge went away because it just, it happens, right? So I've learned since then how to repaint. Um, luckily, I've done a very good job of remembering how to take care of my paints. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm going to have to watch an FMP video on how to take care of my paints. Yeah. But, coming soon. <laughs> but I look at TJ's paintings and I've seen the, okay, so now TJ, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to tear into you in a good way. Oh, boy. You're no longer the slow painter. That's true. I, I'm sorry, because I've known you ever before this night that you just painted. I've known you since I've met you and known you. You've been the slow, steady, the turtle wins the race, amazing painter. Yep. I've seen that what you just did with that night, which is bigger than all the other nights. And I'm just, I'm mind blown because you just went to town and you have a family. And you have a job and you have priorities and you just went kaboom check this out guys i just painted this model in x amount of time and it looks amazing so thank you you did an amazing job appreciate that and, and jonathan your nurgle stuff what do you think i started death guard when i started at that time i saw your stuff That's so cool. yes I'm, I'm gonna every individual i'm gonna kind of hit on real quick is and so I took what you did and it inspired me to do something different I want to do a clean dirty look and I achieved it everybody that sees what I've done they would love it yeah but I looked at what you did and I enjoyed it I'm like oh my god this is amazing how can I do my own thing but incorporate Jonathan <laughs> <laughs> and I did and so thank you because you inspired me as well to get my butt in gear and painting and then awesome being part of FMP inspired me to do painting because I want to up my game to inspire other people, like you said. So again, thank you both as a combination, as a community group. Yeah, man. Thank you. Same thing. Your passion, your everything, buddy. Your, uh, your big thing is AOS and that's where a big part we were lacking. So you definitely filled that hole. Well, we're still kind of lacking because I still haven't gotten any videos up. And, you know, I, I'm, or you're getting holes filled. I'm trying to. Hmm. And I, know, this is, I mean, you know, I still at least have to get my army up to a thousand points. So I'm almost there. But this whole 
oh, I was going to bring this one army to LVO, and then I'm like, yeah, now i got to change it up. And that kind of messed me up a little bit because I was like, oh, i got to do more because I don't like the way this is playing. So. And, and that happens. It'll be good. But I want to also thank the patrons. Even though I haven't been around, if it wasn't for the patrons, FMP wouldn't be where they're at today, which means I wouldn't be where I'm at today. So it comes back to the bottom line of people supporting and supporting and then supporting and then support, you know, everybody supports each other. Good times, bad times, even times. Um, I might, I, I might've talked a lot tonight. I just, we get serious. This hobby saves my life. Um, being a, you know, a, a military veteran. And before even I was a veteran, when I was a kid, this is what I went to when I was in bad times is this hobby. Now, I'm not saying that's where you have to go to go. <laughs> you don't have to hit rock bottom to get to this hobby because you won't be able to afford it if you rock bottom. But <laughs> painting the models, building the models, playing the game, the community over the years I have been doing this has been my niche of enjoyment for the years. Without Games Workshop as a whole, without the communities like FMP, uh, Sons of Slambo, The Citadel, I think it's Defenders of Citadel. I, gotta, I really got to ask Matt about this because I, I keep saying this wrong probably. Um, these groups, communities, keep me grounded and keep me going in my in my world, mm -hmm. my personal bubble. And so that's what it's about. Like I, I am a firm. What's the word I look for? Uh, not confession, but but ah oh, man. And I know the word. I had a friend that used owned a hobby store back in the day and helped me out through some hard times because it all developed around this hobby. Um, I'm, I'm gonna do some shout outs. He probably doesn't even know about this channel and I have to let him know. Uh, I have a friend named Chuck and a friend named Ron. Those two individuals saved my life more than once. I don't, I, I mean that literally because they helped me get back into the community and the hobby when I was a young, before military. And if it wasn't for the this hobby, when I got injured with PTSD and all the other anxiety and stuff, this is what keeps me grounded. This is what keeps me enjoyment. This is what keeps my memory going, keeps my brain going. So this hobby has multiple things for people than just a game. So now me being a part of it makes me think outside the box and makes me want to keep thriving to help our community. That's awesome, man. Powerful stuff, Ski. Yeah. No ghosts in my closet, brother. No ghosts in my closet. <laughs> Drink beer, eat food, paint models, play games. Have a good time. Cheers. <laughs> that is a good way. As long as it's legal. Doing it legal. Oh, it's legal. legal. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's good stuff, Ski, man. That's... That's awesome. That's, that's, you know, hearing things like that is, you know, definitely keeps you motivated to just, you know, keep, keep doing it. You know what I mean? Like it's, it's funny as like the, the times you paint, it's your Zen time. You know what I mean? Like I always call it my Zen time. If I'm painting, it's just, you know, it's me and my little, little world painting it, you know? Yep. So that's awesome. It makes me happy. Well, maybe one of these days in the future, not next year, or maybe plan. Maybe we can plan as a community to set up a booth at one of these conventions just to hang out at the booth. Not that just hang out, but represent and find something to bring to the community at an event or yeah. each string in events for the year. Like plan, yeah. we're doing this, this, and this, and this is what we're doing as, as our group. With the help of our community. Yeah. Even if it's seminars. Yep. I, I, I just hanging out. Yep. Having a small game, playing some small games. You know. Uh, I played a ton of Blackstone Fortress. Yeah. And I'm talking like we're on the hidden vault finally. Three straight days of Blackstone Fortress and multiple 
multiple times, almost death, like super death. And is that like mega death? Like, yeah, yeah, <laughs> rock on. Um, <laughs> but yeah, maybe maybe do something like that. Like, get ooh, light bulb. Um, at events, run Blackstone Fortress and do like they do with like D and D and stuff. Like, oh, everybody line up. We have an hour or two hours, and we're going to just grind this out and see how far you can get. And then at the end of the day, whoever gets the farthest win something or who knows what right yeah so just ideas community let us know let us know what you think what we should do it would be great i think everybody's crying from your uh your heartfelt moment i'm sorry <laughs> beginning of the new year i i just want to thank people that i'm thankful for and that's what it comes down to yeah. awesome man so yeah i mean yeah, I think we'll have to do some uh, – definitely want to go to OVO. We'll do some live feeds at night when we're not playing. So, Yes. That – that is something I probably don't want my wife to see, but <laughs> only because she doesn't see me drunk. I, don't, I only drink like this time of the year. So, okay, well – Okay, ski ski knows that one other time, but <laughs> I don't drink very often is my point. Unless I go to like a really cool event that's for the weekend or something, which is very rare. So LVO is usually that one uh, event. So, but yes, I think it would be a lot of fun because you get you get one drink into TJ and he gets white girl wasted and he gets his Asian glow going on. It's hilarious. I've never drank with TJ, so I don't know. I just know I didn't even drink with – well, I did drink with a indi couple individuals at a different convention, but I was the smart one out of the bunch. <laughs> um, but it was hilarious. What I did see was great. That's true. I no clue what you're talking about, Jonathan. <laughs> well, I actually didn't see you drink. I just came up to you, and you were like, oh, I had a couple of drinks or something. You are hanging out with Lawrence. And you were, you were like, woo! I was like, hey, TJ's drunk. What? What was this? All right. right. The one time you got drunk. I wasn't even drunk. You were pretty oh. drunk. You told me you were drunk. Well, no, I know. Was I hanging out with? I don't remember this at all. This is all, this is all hearsay. Well, <laughs> bad thing. See, it. Now we have live. See, there are no pics, no proof. Now we're going to go live and we're going to have proof. Oh, boy. Well, well, it kind of sucks though. I'm kind of I'm kind of upset though with LBO because we're gonna be a man down, and it kind of sucks. Is that about Alan? Yeah. Yeah. No, that was just just dumped on us today. Yeah. I, I mean, for good causes though, that it's nothing out of it's out of his control, and it's okay. No. Yeah. I mean, after I this it. too, he'll be able to be on the channel. <laughs> <laughs> we got to tell him. Yep. While we're gone, you're running the channel. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Put him to work. Tell him he's got to go to Atomic and 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 do stuff. Yeah, he's gonna run a mini LVO at it for all the people. <laughs> for the people who couldn't go, it's kind of just my LVO. Yep. Um. Yeah, I'm I'm excited. Uh, I know we do need to do some sit downs and talk about what we're gonna, what we want to do at LVO as as a group, as individuals. Time. I know me and TJ kind of as a group talked about when who's playing when. Yep. And so. Now that Mr. Jonathan's back, that's that's great. Today you're back, um, but yeah, I think I think LVO can be a better better year. Like every year, I think it improves. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Yes, sir. I agree. Well, I don't think guys. It is midnight. It's I'll late. Find fortress, but trying it at an event doesn't sound fun. Does sound fun. Oh, okay, Tyler. Um, well, real quick, I want to answer someone in the chat. Uh, Blackstone Fortress is going to be supported by Games Workshop um, more than just the game itself. They've already established that for this year. They're going to add expansions. Um, you already looked at the the Umber Hulk, which I'm 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 for, but I'm against at the exact same time. I'm very 50-50 with that aspect, but I love the two models that are in like power armor. Or fully armored Umber Hawks, whatever they are. <laughs> um, 
But Blackstone Fortress is a game that Tyler, I've been playing their board games since they came out with Silver Tower. Silver Tower was great. Hammer Hall was better. Blackstone Fortress is so much better than both of them to combine. You have to work for it. It's a game that takes a while to beat. Silver Tower, you can just play it, and it's done. Hammer Hall is hard if you have a player playing an enemy. Blackstone Fortress, this is a very well um, comment that I want to put emphasize. Four players with an AI is pretty medium hard, okay? Because it's all about dice rolls at that point. And you, you you formulate these combos with characters and abilities, and it's great. So you can you kind of can cheat the cheat the game in a way, but you're not really cheating it. If you have a fifth player in Blackstone Fortress controlling the AI, you're screwed. I'm telling you right now, it is going to be you take if anybody plays World of Warcraft or any MMO or any RPG, you have like the easy level dungeons, which is like normal level. But then if you have that fifth player. It's mythic or super hard, or it, it, it's it changes the whole game. So, Blackstone Fortress they finally got right the things that the other two games were missing. So, okay. just want to put that out there. Umbro, Amble, because yeah, yeah, it's Amble, Amble. Which the the two forty k ish Necromunda models that we didn't talk about look amazing, and I want one just to paint. I don't care about the game and aspects. I think it's an amazing game, but I want to paint the model. But for the Blackstone Fortress version, I'm I'm very fifty fifty on that. I don't know. After playing <laughs> what I played through, a chaos. Lord with a freaking thunder hammer that ignores everything and gets two attacks and kills anybody at any time. It I don't know if they're gonna outdo that with that guy. <laughs> so just saying. Like I said, we've in three days we accomplished in Blackstone Fortress, we got through all the strongholds. We made it to all through all the strongholds, and we're, we're on the, the hin bolt. And that took three days. Of non-stop playing, and I'm talking between, let's say, 12, 12, 1 o'clock in the afternoon to about 10 o'clock at night for three days straight. Jesus Christ. Yeah. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Lucky. I want to right, put now it's, I, that's all I'll say is like, man, I wish I could do that. But and we got lucky because you have to, there's certain stipulations that you have to fulfill to get to that point. And we just got lucky that we got to that point. So. Oh, okay. So y'all, y'all rolled a little lucky. Yeah, we got we got on the plus side of lucky. Except for this last bit, we have to do. We have to explore a lot until we get to hidden vault. Like we're at the point to get to the hidden vault, but we have to explore to get the clues to get to the hidden vault. So there, there's multiple games before we get there. But we're we're there. We're done with the strongholds. We killed all four. Legit. We didn't cheat. We almost died multiple times, multiple characters. So, but yeah. Sorry. I just want, I, I saw the comments and I wanted to put that out there to let you know that Blackstone Fortress is probably one of the top games that they've come out with. That's a board game besides Space Hulk. Can't get any better with Space Hulk. I'm sorry. <laughs> You want to challenge? Play Space Hulk. Your win rate is like thirty percent. Even the uh, game is hard. No, no, hold on, hold on. I think the worst thing ever was the what was it, Combat Patrol or something with the with the Scouts and Gene Steelers. Like that game was impossible for the Scouts. Oh. Now. Uh, the white dwarf when they added the terminators right they added terminators to that i forgot what they added to it i think it was terminators it made the game equal when you when you add the terminators instead of scouts it made it equal which is really weird really yeah 
because it, it, it's like, oh, I got Terminators. I'm good. Yeah, because with the scouts, it was like, <laughs> yeah, that, we played that game, Jonathan, remember? And it was so bad. Was it like a 9% win rate? <laughs> Dude, I think we played like six games. I didn't, I lost every game. <laughs> um, which, um, I just read the full White Dwarf for the first of the year. Oh, you read it? Yes, I read all of it. They have a positive direction. There's a short story. There is new rules for the skirmish AOS. There is the battle reports, the heavy metal, the Crimson Fist rules are in that White Dwarf. If you want to do Crimson Fist for 40K, that's January's White Dwarf. You need that White Dwarf. Like, Ooh. you're not going to get that anywhere else. That is where it's at. Unless they add it later in a book, the rules for Crimson Fist are in that book. Uh, the crew kill team um, is in the book. Um, a lot of conversions. But I'm, I'm telling you, their direction, if they keep this up for the rest of the year, is amazing. That White Dwarf is... <laughs> The story alone was amazing. Um, the the updates for the okay positive amazing book covers a lot hands down amazing like the bases they go over lava bases for Age of Sigmar they go over death bases there's there's like four bases they go over and they really help you out with that um, which I've actually tried it on a base and it works so just telling you it's not fabricated it actually works. Um, but the problem is, it goes back to what eighth or sixth edition, TJ Jonathan, where we had to like, you had to have like twelve books to play a game. Yeah, that's the only problem I have. Is oh, I want to play Crimson Fist. So now you need your Space Brain Codex, you need your White Dwarf, you need your General or your General's Handbook, you need your uh, Rule Book, you need anything else? Your app. Thank you. So. It's getting Templates. convoluted again. Templates. Yeah. Oh yeah. Template. Oh my god. Oh, but it's there. So I'm just saying it's a good white dwarf. This time I get it every month. So white dwarf full view, 80% thumbs up. <laughs> oh, you're killing me. And it almost maybe want to start back up in 40k with Crimson Fist, but I'm like, no. Sounds like it should. Crimson Fist, ski, go for it now. But I would paint them blue and paint the armor red. And blue. They'll put everything in chapter approved at the end of the year, like how chapter approved used to. Tyler, I'm hoping that that is one of my biggest. I'm gonna say my biggest complaints as a veteran player, because we're all three that are still here. I know it's late, and I'm sorry, guys. I'm keeping you up. I love talking to people. I love commenting things. I'm sorry. I miss the old chapter proof books. I really do because Grey Knights, Necron, Sisters of Battle, and I wish they would just take everything in all these books and just be like, okay, cool, we updated this in White Dwarf. We have to, every for the year, take everything they do in White Dwarf and throw it in chapter proof with some bonuses. I would be okay with that because then you just need three books <laughs> instead of twelve. I mean. Yeah. I, I agree. Tell I, don't how, yeah. Yeah. I don't know how they're going to do it either. But I, I wish they would not do things in White Dwarfs like that for army rules. Because it really hinders people playing. Because you're like, let me find this rule. Let me throw out my White Dwarf. Let me throw out um, the Vigilus campaign. Let me throw out the General's Handbook 2019. Let me throw out the rule book. Let me throw out the Primaries Codex. Let me throw out the chapter text. It's like, hey guys, I'm over here playing and I have 12 books in front of me with all the rules. <laughs> it's like, oh. yeah, that's true. I mean, there's going to be two Vigilist books, so it depends on which one they're in. Yep. So, but yeah, I don't know, man. <sighs> we shall have to see, man. Well, I got to get some sleep, man. I got to work. Yeah. I gotta do the same thing. I gotta wake up at six. Yeah. <laughs> yeah me too. So, all right, guys. As always, thank you so much to our Patreon supporters, uh, everybody who participated in all the comments, and everybody just listening on in while you're painting, 
or watching us, you know, we appreciate you guys. You guys help make the channel. So, uh, anything else, guys? Uh, TJ? I'm good, man. I will see y'all next week, and hopefully I'll have some painting updates coming on the, on the Facebook page as soon as I get these base coats done on my red and wash it with some more red. Awesome. I think that would be great. And I, all I want to say is is pass on the news to everybody. Everybody that's watching, tell your friends. Tell people that play. Tell them to come watch. More Age of Sigma players, more 40K players, whatever. Just pass the word. Please, please pass the word. We thank you for all your support. Yes, we do. Love All right, guys. Spooky ghost. <laughs> Wait.